any visitors tonight? Introduce yourself. I'm Gary. Well, I don't know you. Welcome, welcome. I'm Steve Jenkins. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Steve and I work together at the height, and uh, he lives up in Arrow, and I asked him to come down and join our meeting, and he says, I'll try to make it, and he did, so thank you. And Jay, man, I know, I know him from Discover. Oh, you're in the house. Yeah. 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 Okay, one of the shows coming up is going to be the uh, uh, Vietnamese show. It's the uh, 6th and 7th of July. It's uh, Magnolia Street in Gardena. And Shirley's going to post it uh, on the email. So uh, you guys will get on that. I got another one. Okay, go ahead. There's a Marina, Marina show this weekend. Okay. Down the Marina Del Rey? Yeah. I think Shirley's closing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's got one in there. There's a couple of shows coming up in Las Vegas, but I don't know if anybody's going that way. <coughs> Anything else we have to discuss? Okay, tonight, a good friend, Dennis. I sucked him in. I sucked him in last year. Yes, he did. And I said, Dennis, do you do uh, uh, demos? He goes, uh, he goes, but for you, I'll do it. And I said, well, thank you. So this is Dennis Pakistima, and he's from up north. I'm going to let him tell you all about himself, because I know you get tired of me talking. So welcome. Can we give him a good run? Yeah. And ask questions. Ask questions. Because he's, he's full of knowledge. Okay. Don't be shy, because you won't know. Okay. Some questions first. Is how many people are relatively new to Like the last three years or so? Okay. And then how many of you are, are clueless on Japanese yeah. black pine? I'm still okay. <laughs> Come on, folks. Raise your hand. I mean, the reason is, you know, I will start with some basic things. But some people have experience, and I don't want to keep it too basic. Very good. It's green. It's the kind of, that's the audience I like. Well, I can tell you anything. And then, uh, I do welcome questions. So obviously, if you're just beginning, you may not be able to formulate a question about Japanese black pine. It's a very, uh, it's two things. One, it's, it's, in Japanese bonsai, it's the, the plant, the number one plant. Yeah. It's known for longevity. Oh, yeah. and, and it's, it's, uh, if you want to get really good at this, you want to have a tree ready for the great Kokufu Ten Show in Japan, it'll take you about 30 years of study. Yeah. If you want to be pretty good, you know, just in, in California, it'll take about 10 years of study. But just understanding basic principles is fairly easy. I don't want to dissuade you from doing Japanese back pine, but it'll take you about a year to understand the basics. And then some of you have been in there long enough and you hear all these theories about Japanese back pine management. And that's what, if you've heard a theory, then speak up, you know, it's just like, uh, if you, there's like maybe a thousand theories of how to prune and maintain a Japanese back pine. You might just get one small segment of it. So I'm trying to tell you, you know, the, the big picture and how these little things fit in here. And, uh, I will be talking about zones of strength. And this is another term, it's called omoshiroi. I don't even know what it means, thank you. <laughs> it's a Japanese word, I'm Japanese American, but I have to kind of clarify that. You know, I'm an American with Japanese ancestry, but I can't speak Japanese. Uh, but I did train in Japan, lo and behold. I, trained, I, lived, I lived in Japan for two years studying bonsai for Mitsuya, Yasuo, Toyahashi, Japan. <coughs> and, uh, I think the person, yeah, the person that followed me in the apprenticeship there was Cheryl Manning. The one that preceded me was Kathy Shannon. And then there's been uh, Boone Yarat, Monique to Deep Heart, David DeGroat. A lot of people have gone through this pipeline now. <clears throat> so if, if you ask me a very sophisticated question, I do have some experience with the best bonsai in Japan. I mean, I, it was a working nursery. We show trees in all the major shows and Professionally, we've worked on bonsai throughout all the islands in Japan. So, I, 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 bonsai must have worked on maybe 10,000 Japanese black pine bonsai. <coughs> I'm an arborist, I'm a tree pruner by trade. So, I've worked on maybe 1,000 a, a Japanese black pines per season, you know, you know, landscape situation. Not the same technique, but you know, you get very familiar with Japanese black pine. It's something that I, I was known for, but you know, I. I I also work on equal amount of uh, maples. Uh, and then 
I'm really partial in my area in El Cerrito, California, which is next to Berkeley. It's a foggy area during the, even now. Well, actually, it's warmer in the Cesar area than it is down here. <clears throat> but uh, I, fog belt trees. Usually it's your, uh, are you familiar with Hinoki cypress? These are plants in the Camasipras family. They do very well in cool climates, like Washington, Oregon. And they do very well in my yard, redwoods. I can't grow elms very well, bougainvilleas, but I can grow wisteria. <laughs> and I can't grow ship, uh, I, I can't really develop uh, California junipers, though I collected maybe 100 in my like, hobby. Yeah, I used to go with hair here all the time. And I've been doing bonsai for about 38 years now. <clears throat> It's a hobby, but it's an obsessive hobby. You know, I, I, for the longest time, I had about a thousand trees in my collection. Now I'm down to 500. But I, I, it's been a great hobby. You know, it's it's taken off. As an arborist, I used to travel in the United States working on specialty trees, famous trees. So I used to work at a lot of <clears throat> arboretums. And the last tree I did, you know, retired was uh, Walt Disney's tree in Disneyland. <clears throat> So it's storybook land, it's like a Pinocchio story, you go on the boat, and up there's a little Swiss mountain village. <clears throat> right behind the village there's an uh, Italian stone pine that Walt Disney planted in the late 50s. Only one he ever did. It is ugly, yeah, really ugly, but I, I, it took me uh, one year to get it healthy, and it took another year to work on it. So, you know, it's been a, a people interested in any kind of pine, you know, even though this is a Japanese black pine presentation. You have a question on, on uh, Mughal pines, Scots pines, uh, lodgepole pines, Jeffrey pines, uh, white, you know, there's different kind of Japanese white pines. You know, free to ask the question. It's still related. I'll, if you ask me a question about white pine, then there's a different technique. I'll be able to compare and contrast. <clears throat> so this one I grew from seed. <coughs> and I just, uh, you know, I've had like a, a hundred of these. I used to have five, 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 500. When I came back in Japan, I had a, a, a bag of seeds that had like 500 seeds in it. And then my instructor in Japan, Mitsuya Yasuo, his father was a bonsai guy. So his grandfather, we always addressed him and he gave me a bag of seeds. And then Toyohashi is Aichi Prefecture in Japan. And we're, it's, it's, it's on the coast, it's like a seaport town. But then right there, there's a peninsula, and that's where Japanese black pines grow. So you go and you can find the mother tree. Yeah, you know, look at that bark, look at the needle quality, and you take the seeds from it. But it's not like every seed comes true, because you know, there's a lot of hanky panky going on here, man. Pollen comes from this tree and that one. So you sow 500, you know, maybe 100 come out like really. Japanese black pines are known for the quality of the bark, the sharpness of the needle. They're really strong, so this is. Like some of our pines, you know, you got like one shoot here, one shoot here. You know, this has like, you know, 10,000 in one spot, and you got to hack through this thing. <clears throat> so this one, you know, I, I used uh, escape branches on this to get the trunk a little bit bigger. So, you know, when they got too long, I could, it, it wouldn't fit together on all these trees in my front yard. So I used to grab it and bend it and stick it back in there when they're still supple. So there's some twisted in here. But I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to incorporate some old shit oil. It's like a... Uh, it's, it's a term I uh, loosely interpret as, as whimsical, kind of humorous, fun, but not funny, not ha ha. You know, it's not like Mickey Mouse looking thing. It, it's just, it's just uh, sometimes I have a branch that, that hugs the trunk like that. It just comes straight down and it moves out. But most people have a branch out like that. Or if you're trying to bend it, it has this little hook on it, a little ridge. But from, a, from an early stage, I can pin this thing to the trunk like that. So it's actually touching the trunk. And it moves down, and then I can move it out. So just so my tree will look different than somebody else's tree. A lot of your trees nowadays, they tend to look the same. You know, branch left, right, right. I have some of those. I could have done a demo and look pretty good. You know, left, right, left, right. Ooh, that's nice. So I picked this one, and I regret it now, man. This thing is ugly. Yeah. <laughs> it's really ugly. You know, actually, what it is, is, is you see the trunk, you know, it's just bulbous and like this. It has these, like a long neck in it. Yeah. You know, it's like Laura and Hardy standing on top of each other, man. It looks kind of funny. You know, how do you incorporate the two? So I'm going to try to, you know, and this is, the more I cut, I can see, you know, I, I just looked at it. Oh my goodness. You know? <laughs> but I don't care. It's going in the raffle. Yeah. Oh, wow. 
So if I screw it up, if I screw it up, you know, I'm leaving town, so I don't care. You can talk bad about me all you want. This tree is, uh, I planted it in 1991, so it's 20, oh, about 27, 28 years old. And uh, you start with this technique. I'm not going to explain it, it's too much to explain, but it's, it's a Japanese technique of growing stock. You know, you, you plant the seed, it comes up, and at a certain point you, you cut it off. You throw the bottom away with the roots, you just take the top part, it's, it's like a cutting. It has needles there, and you put that in the ground, and the needles are right on the ground. And then, as they take up, the needles will turn into branches. So you get the branches right on the base, right on the bottom, so you get this kind of flare. And I let the thing grow this way, so that the trunk goes this way. So the escape lead, that's why there's some tall skinny things in here, because I let it escape out, and then that makes the trunk go this way. But if you have branches on the bottom, that makes the trunk go this way. So the combination of both makes it flare out. So this one's kind of smaller, and it actually, it's, it's kind of odd too, because there's a base, and then there's a, a, a piece in the front that's the lead. But it's like this big old thing in the back, it's like, like, a, like a butt, like a rear end, man. It's sticking out like that, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, it's in the back here, that's where it belongs, you know. <laughs> so that's, yeah, very good, you got that. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen here, and I, I like the edge. <laughs> Feast or famine, boy. I can't do this one at home, but people know where I live. <laughs> it looks good, I'll take credit if they screw it up, and I'm getting on I-5 and going home right away. <laughs> now, I, I cut off some escape branches, you know, in time. It will callous. And this one is, uh, the way you can tell the age is the bark is about, it's about this far up now. So when the tree is young, up to 15 years old, generally there's no bark on it. It's smooth. So then it starts to form bark on the trunk. It could be 20, 25 years old. Then it moves out on the branch, or it moves up to the top, and it's about 50 years old. Then it moves out on the branches, it's about 50, 60, 70 years old. So it's relatively young. <clears throat> but uh, uh, in this the first generation, I, I, I came back in Japan the first time, and I sold these seeds, it was like 1990. So the Regals are here. They were in Sacramento, and then I, I did a demo up there because Mitsuya, my instructor, was one of the headliners. So all the students had to uh, participate in our own demo in front of him, you know, and he would kind of supervise us. So I brought the, the biggest one, yeah, the second biggest one. It was about this big from C. But it was a uh, Shohin, and it was a, uh, and when I finished growing this thing, I was kind of proud. It was ugly, yeah, you because know, like, it, you know, it's like this big old base. It comes like it's like a Hershey kiss. It came up like that in a perfect taper, but you know. I got a picture if anyone wants to see oh, okay, it. Okay, okay, very good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then uh, so I'll get started, and I am going to I, again. I have no idea. In general, I, I have some. Now that I look at the branches, I have kind of an idea. And when you do omoshiroi. Sometimes it's just like, it's clueless. And then you said, you know, you work on these things enough and then you, you, I have some things, it's called the double back in a lot of my trees. A lot of Japanese back pines, you know, they get, branches get a little long and leggy and a little puff on the end. So you can't, it won't pop back in here when the tree gets mature. So you know, I, I grabbed the piece from the end and then grew it back this way and then grew it back out that way so I create this kind of S curve in there. It's still straight, but nothing here, but I, I kind of disguised that by having a smaller branch in front of it to kind of look at the curve rather than the straightness of the branch. So I, I'll probably do that today. <clears throat> and excuse some of the tools, they're kind of crude, because I, I drove down here and I don't want to have people steal my tools. And Damn. Damn. <laughs> All right, let's go, Jerry. <laughs> I am going to cut off one of the escape branches. I'm going to take it off this, just so I can cut it and I'll put it back on. Yeah. Well, I better cut off the right one. Anyone want to come up and take a look before he cuts it? <laughs> 
You got the wrong one, Dennis. Too late. But you can see it has kind of a curvature in here. But it started as a long branch, and then I had to cut these other little shoots out of here. Because it's a skate branch. That's to make the trunk bigger, but you can't make it so strong that the other tree, parts of the tree die. But like the skate lead, you know, I can grow that thing up to five feet tall, but it can't be real lush, because then the bottom tends to die. Oh. All the energy is going to this one, because it's getting the sun. So in that case, I had like a pom-pom on a stick. I had a long little pole here, just a little growth on the top, so light can penetrate down to here. Can you plant that? No. You, that you some, uh, yeah. root generally, I would say 99% of the time you can't. If this one guy in San Francisco, it's kind of like in the worst area you can grow, and it's like in the fog belt, the sunset district. Nothing grows out there. And he brought in a pine to a workshop. Uh, I used to be in a workshop with uh, Suzuki uh, Hiroshi, a real famous bonsai master in, in the San Francisco area. So we had a workshop in his garage, it was like 10 of us. And some of you might know this one woman, Hideko Me Taxi. She's uh, very prominent in the bonsai community. She, she was part of this workshop. Like, like a renaissance woman, she's just fantastic. But you know, we had a great workshop. We missed, uh, it was like 10 people and they all had like at least 30 years of experience. And then Suzuki was one that, uh, well he sure liked that scotch and bourbon, boys. <laughs> Look down these trees. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, but it, it's been, it's kind of different. Uh, uh, I mentioned at the bonsai but, you know, I'm appreciative of Larry and Nina Rago, but then, uh, you know, I, I remember like Kei Komai, Kan Komai, and then Frank Nagata. I mean, I didn't know him, but he, he lived in Berkeley. I grew up in Berkeley. And this is pre, you know, I, I hated trees when I was growing up. I, my father was a gardener. I didn't want to, nothing to do with gardening and trees. But Berkeley was a hotbed. There was the Frank Nagata, and there was two others that were just giants, man. This man, Mr. Takahashi and Homi Isayama. Just, just Renaissance people. And uh, you know, they, all, they all lived within about six blocks of my house. And, uh, but anyway, this, this is part of the legacy, and I do an older style of bonsai. It's more the Japanese, the Japanese gardener style. You know, nowadays it's kind of considered country bumpkin stuff, or crude, or immature. It's just, what I appreciate is a story of a people, a history of a people that started from seed in 1950. Because, you know, pre-interment, you know, they, no one was doing that much bonsai, and during the interment years, they lost everything. So they came back. <clears throat> you have the same kind of history here. There's a lot of people that, guys were gardeners, women were house cleaners. You know, like Harry Harrell, or John Lockett, you know. Came from Colorado. My parents, after the internment, they were in Arizona and then uh, they were in Berkeley and they, they were uh, evacuated off the coast. And then they didn't want to come back to California right away, so they went to Colorado to do some farming, but they couldn't hack it there. It was just too hard, so they came back to California. And I was born, 1947. Okay, you're old. No, man. <laughs> That's true. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> So you were going into a story about that piece if it could be planted. Very good. And really? that there was a guy that... He planted one and it grew. Wow. And he planted two or three of them. I said, well, these are nice trees, you know, nice bark. And I said, I, I, he from cutting. From a cutting. Well, that has to be in certain conditions. Probably. Well, look at that. This guy's got the touch. <laughs> he might be lying to me too, but he says from a cutting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've taken cuttings, but not that big. But it brings and it takes a long time for the root to come out. So by that time, you know, if you got to miss this thing every day, you got to do a lot of stuff, and it, it, it'll croak on you before. It's probably dead already because it never set out a roof. Versus like elms and stuff, you know, this thing like a, a few months, a trident maple. <clears throat> the reason I, I'm, I'm talking right now, and I'll make one more cut. Two more cuts. So, does anybody know what I'm doing? Showing the color of the canvas, maybe? Nope. No, that's, that's good observation. What I'm looking for is how fast, fast it bleeds. So the fish is coming out. This was in 15 seconds, which is real good. So 
it's, it's, these are issues I'll be talking about is, the, is how strong or weak the tree is. The stronger the tree, the more I can cut. Normally, if you're doing a workshop with me, I would say maybe we'll take out 25 to 30% of the tree at the most. If we got to take out 60%, well then it's, it's next year we'll do another 30%. On this tree, I know, it's made of mine, I've worked on these things, a lot of my trees like this, and I could take out about 60%. Is that Dr. Trino? It, it is until I don't it. But if it comes out ugly, it's your tree. So these came out right away. So I took it off here, here, and here. And then they have an aroma. So if someone's cutting a pine tree down the street, big landscape tree, yeah, you could tell it's a pine tree. You know, junipers have a certain Pitch smell, uh, hinokis have a certain smell, Monterey pines have a more of a sweeter smell, and some pine, pines have a real acid, a real tart smell, but Japanese black pine, it's a, a fragrant aroma. So it's, it's, the pitch is coming out clear, which is good. Sometimes it kind of got milky, not good. I'm looking at the quality of needles, they're sharp, they're straight. And if you're interested in all the qualities of I've listed about 100 factors of what is a healthy tree. Because I had to do some uh, very historical trees, so you can't make a mistake. So, and conversely, if it's not healthy, then it's not, you know, then you can't do anything. But this one, you know, it's a bigger cut, but it, it, the pitch is coming out. It took about, uh, about a minute, which is okay for a big branch. So this is spring. Um, technically, I mean, it might be summer, but it's, it's within springtime, it should come out within 15 seconds. If it comes out at 30, it's not as strong as you think. If it's 15 seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, then this area is weak. It might be in the shade, in your yard, or it might be indicative of a weak root on this side. The water's not moving up to that root, to that branch enough. So, you know, they're telling me, you know, I have to figure these things out. So if this were like, uh, September, October, getting into the fall months, it takes about 30 seconds. And just for February, it takes about a minute. So if it doesn't bleed within a minute, you know, in the winter time, don't work on the tree. So I'll tell you the seasons, and this is just in general. Now you're gonna hear something else, but there's like, there's the basic tenets of what we use for Japanese black pine culture, and then there's like at least a thousand adaptations to the basics. You know, it depends on the, the zone. You live in Minnesota versus Hawaii. I work on Japanese black pines in Hawaii and I have to do a different uh, technique since there's no dormant season. <clears throat> well, I made that cut and I'm, I'm satisfied the trees are bleeding enough. They smell good. The pitch is clear, not murky. <clears throat> the pitch is sticky. If and, it's and murky, what does it mean? Sick. It's, yeah, I, I don't know botanically what's happening here. But it's just, it's just uh, I, I made a crude observation, and not, it may not even be true. I work on thousands of pines, I used to, per year. And I looked at these trees, and you know, they, they just, by, the, by eyesight, they look okay. They look pretty good. They're strong, the new growth is coming out, you know, maybe a foot long. And I look at some trees, they're kind of yellowish, full of cones, and the growth is about one quarter of an inch. So I cut these trees, and just, there's some things that were consistent with all these trees, and some things that were consistent with all these trees. So then I, I just made pine theory. You know, I said, uh, all these trees that are on the good side, they bled fast, pictures clear, all these trees that look kind of, it just visually didn't look so good. The pitch wasn't, it, was, it wasn't either clear, or another good color is kind of like a molasses color, a honey color, that's good too. Anything other than a little darker, it could be some you know, root rot issues, some, you know, some pathogens that are getting in there, why it's not healthy. But it's just an observation, right? you know, I, I, I don't know. I didn't do really a technical, professional experimentation on it. But no one else, no one else has, and people tell me this stuff, and you know, I refer to them as talking heads, and they, they got a PhD in this stuff, they don't know what they're talking about. So when you, it's really touchy. Yes, I made that cut and now I'm going to start. I wasn't going to start until Mary Morrissey died. No, she's <laughs> We can start. She, she's, when I was the president of Golden State, man, she saved my butt. 
on the board. Maybe it looked good. <coughs> okay, so I said, I cut that off. And I said, the tree, when I observed it, was ugly. It seemed to come than I thought, man. Really ugly. I'm not sure what to do here. But you can see there's a big butt here. And then some of these things are sticking straight up. So how do you make this thing that straight up be the apex on top of this? So my first thought is, and this is part of doing bonsai, is, is how you sequence the thought of making it uh, a bonsai for one thing. And there are rules. And then uh, this one, and there's rules of art. So if the trunk is kind of bulbous, and the first thing I want you to do is find the good. Most of us tend to find the bad. You know, I, I mentioned the butt and this kind of stuff, but find the good. And you bring it out. What's good about this is, is the trunk. Find the front, huh? Yeah, that, that's, 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 that's a bonsai basic. But sometimes the front, I mean, the, yeah, the front, you know, as we define it, is what the maximum flare is and how the branches lay out. But sometimes the good is kind of over here. You know, I may have to make the front a little askew. I, mean, I may not be able to bring out the best root spread because I want to bring out the best qualities of the tree. So this one is the base. And since it's a Mikawa black pine, you wait another 20 years, the bark should be really nice. That's what they're known for. <coughs> and then, uh, in this case, it's easy. I, I can find the front because I already found the back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the button is already there, and then you don't put the button in the front, so you put the button in the back, so therefore the other side must be the front. Okay, and then, how do you rectify this and this? My first thought is trying to squeeze this thing down. You know, so I can, I can kind of scratch it down so it'll be right on top here. And it's a matter of proportion. You know, you have a trunk like that, and then you want to, if you want to bring that out, you bring everything down and put it around what is good. If you have a slender trunk, you want to have a really long and leggy and long branches. Short and squatty, long and lean. You know, you don't want to see, uh, you know, someone that's real tall and slender, with an arm like that. Oh, right. You know, people with head. Wow, you know, look at Joe. Oh, 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 oh. But he's proportionate well. Oh, oh, oh. You know, big stumps for legs. <laughs> but that, that's what you're looking for, you know, what is comfortable to everybody. So it's the proportion of things. You can't have a big bulky tree, big trunk, with skinny branches on it. And this one is going to be, if I squinch it down, I can almost get it to show size, which is, you know, where, because I'm not into metrics, you know, I would say something under eight inches. <clears throat> and I have some, uh, I guess a lot of design problems, so what I'm going to do is this first thing. <laughs> uh, the concept here is called the big ugly to the little ugly. So I'm just going to make a smaller version of it. <clears throat> just to see what I can, I can Looking around here, like I said, this wasn't something I had in my yard and I was looking at it every day to figure out what I'm going to do for this, this uh, demonstration. <coughs> I'm kind of shocked that it's so dense, Dennis. There's yes. so many needles yeah. in a certain area. Okay, and then this is, this is characteristic of this type of pine, I mean, this cultivar pine, mm. the Mikawa black pine. They're pretty strongly budded. <coughs> so when you have this kind of pine, uh, Let's say, one of the things you have to do in pine culture is to thin it out in the fall. So our trees, it's only got like three shoots on it. And thin, that's what the book says, thin out what? There's only three shoots. In Japan, it'd be 15, 20 in one spot. You have to thin. Light won't get in there, and plus these knots start forming in the tree. You got all this growth in one spot, and a big old knuckle form here. So you have to thin it. But it's like we're talking same pine, but it's in a different culture. Japanese black pine, Japan, Japanese. These are coastal trees. They like uh, <clears throat> mild temperatures. They like full sun, but they need good drainage. In Japan, the islands are volcanic, so you know, it could rain like crazy, but they need summer water. And then they need good water, you know, rain water. So in Japan, it rains like crazy in the summertime, the monsoonal season, but <laughs> water just drains right out. Yeah. So like in a landscape situation, you see Japanese black pines always planted on mounds. It's not like people are cheap in the landscape and get a small tree and put it on a mound and make it look bigger. It's just for the drainage. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just going around and just making some 
thinning cuts. Again, feel free to ask a question if you have one. Would you do this thinning, like this work on a tree that has been repotted? This no. This year? no. Good question. In a sense of, there's a sequence to do all the stuff in, and this is, if you're doing a little thinning, you know, I got a branch like that, and then there's three shoots in one area, maybe I just go to two. If you just repot it and you're shooting out like that, go ahead. You know, it's, it's just, just technically, if you repot it, you cut the roots. If you repot it and just tickle the roots, then go ahead you know, and cut the rest of it. Yeah. You repot it in uh, January, and the new growth is this long, well, go ahead. I mean, it's, the tree will tell you. Yeah. You repot it, and nothing's happened, and then don't do anything. Yeah. So one of the premises is never weaken a weak tree. So if it's been repotted, it's like having a heart operation. Well, let's don't get a nose job you know, like in two months after that. You know, it's going to be from the heart operation. Repotting is a major attack on the tree. You're cutting all the, you know, the roots. Usually you're cutting most of the hair roots off of there. There's no mechanism to take water into the, the tree because the, the fine roots are gone. It'll take a couple, you know, but you know, if it's a good growing season, a good strong tree, maybe in about one, one month you'll get theater roots coming out. <coughs> But if you whack the top really hard, you kick a landscape tree and you knock it down like two, two feet tall and make a cut like that, don't repot it. Right. You need a root system to be strong enough so you can pump water through the tree, a lot of needles and a photosynthesize and that energy goes back over the wound and help it callus. If you do the top and the bottom at the same time, the tree will never callus. Feet of roots, uh I hear a lot, for junipers, the strength li lies in the foliage, whereas for pines, the strength is in the root system. Um, mm. Is that true, and what, what do they mean? What exactly does that mean? That's not true. It's just true of, of, of I mean, it, it's, it's true in the sense of many, I would say 90% of the trees I work on, the strength is in both. If it's in the foliage and in the root, you need both. You know, if I have a, a root system but I don't have any foliage on the top, the root system atrophies. There's actually no reason for them to exist. You know, they're not pumping water in anything. But if you have, like, a, uh, you cut the roots, then you have all this green foliage on here, it's overtaxing the system of the tree, and the tree tends to collapse. So before, you don't like to collect junipers, like California junipers, we used to do a 50-50. You go in there and you take off 50% of the roots, you take off 50% of the top. People thought that was a good balance. And we've proven that is not true. <clears throat> so you cut the roots, you know, you're not, you gotta cut the roots, the things in the desert ground, you gotta cut all these things off. Then we cut off maybe about a third of the top, not a half. We found by leaving more top without leaving too much, it's the chicken and the egg, but in this case, the foliage helps develop the roots. Then the roots help develop the top, and then at that point, then you start fertilizing. But the strength doesn't necessarily lie in the bottom or the top. It's just, it's a relationship between the two. But there are zones of strength. So Japanese black pine tend to be apical dominant. Uh, I'll just do this. This is the easiest way. I don't have time to draw this thing out. If you let it grow, the top is more strong. It sends out these multi leaves because that's where the sun is, and plus the tree is strong on the top. So, what we try to do is, you know, basic thing is to try and make the tree. So that you have less top, which is a zone of strength, and then we grow these things out, because they get more light now, and then the energy is not going here, it's going throughout the tree. You have a bigger bottom, which is the zone of weakness, and you have a smaller top with a zone of strength to balance the tree out. So, zone of strength, it's kind of like, uh, this is to study and balance. And if you, if you come up with some, some people know what decandling is, there's a lot of decandling techniques. You tell me the technique that you heard of, and I can tell you how that fits into this overall pattern of pine theory. Uh, if you don't say anything, that's okay. Yeah, I'll tell you more about my, uh, I, well, how I used to be famous. The way that, the way that I've learned is, all, all at once, uh, if there are some weak candles, then leave those, don't, don't cut those. Yeah. Uh, but if there's you know, 
if it's a strong tree and it, it can do for some uh, candle pruning that year, then do all at all at the same time. Okay, it, this is okay. I'll answer that in a, in a fast way, and then I'll cover this as we have time. When we actually open this up, I'll show you the branch. But generally. If the branch isn't managed properly, it gets real strong on the end. So the two zones are strange on the tree, the top of the tree and then the ends of the branches. Because that's where the sun is. So they get abnormally strong. If you don't control the end of the branch, this dies. The inside dies. You don't control the top, the bottom dies. So in bonsai, we gotta have this thing that has, you don't want to have just a long naked branch on the bottom, a little tiny thing. And then these things live hundreds of years, so you have to do, if you want to get good at this, that's why I say it's like, a, for those who want to be professional at pine pruning, you need a like 20 years experience, 30 years experience. Because then you, you don't think about next spring or the decaling sequence. You don't think about two years from now, three years from now. You got to think about 100 years from now. So pine will outlive you, so you're the caretaker of this pine until you pass on to somebody else that has knowledge of how to take care of pine. That's the duty and obligation here. Some things like, uh, uh, some plants only live like 20 years. Ceanothus, manzanitas, you know, don't worry about the long term plan. You know, they're going to be dying out when you finish the silage. But you're talking about decandling or the candle. It's this shoot that comes out in the springtime. It's a long tube. That's the spring growth. So decandling is taking that shoot off. Timing is everything. But in your case, you know, we're trying to jump in the gun. Well, you can leave the small ones and take the big ones out. So you can do this in the springtime. You know, and that's, that's some people actually, you know, I do that once in a while. Depends on the tree and what the, what, what the situation calls for. It depends if this is the top branch or the bottom branch. There's many ways of dealing with this. For the top, I just cut it off. Because I want to get this back into a triangular form. As long as I got some viable shoots down in here. Again, I'll, I'll, I'll cover this hopefully extensively when we get into the decamelant thing. But you don't have, you know, there's a classic in the books, you'll say there's uh, three times a year to work on a Japanese black pine. Mm -hmm. One is in the, if you have a refined tree, you don't have to cut the head off, you know, then it's just the spring growth, you want to manage that. So it's probably about May and June, you take the spring growth off. You can't do it too late because there's not enough time for the secondary growth to come out. So that's the key. Remember, secondary growth. You take the first growth off, new growth comes out nice and small, it come out about this size. And if it's springtime, these things, the shoot is this long. If it ain't that long, the tree's not healthy. Well, how come on this one? Yeah, you know, it, it, but it's it, because I left it in a bush form. Any of you got dissipated in like a hundred ways instead of just two, you know, five candles. If I had cut all these things off while I was in the ground, I would have had these candles about that long. All this energy that would have been here is going into these three or four I left and they would be a foot long. <clears throat> you cut it off too soon, these candles, more come out. And then it'd be like, it'd be too strong by the time you get to the fall. So classic, you'd be candle in the spring, that's if you have a refined tree. You, know, you gotta cut the head off and forget all this stuff. That's a stop. It's a different technique. Okay, and then in, in the fall, we thin it out. You get to these kind of clusters. The new growth in the summertime, after you take the candle off, you got all these little things coming out, and sometimes there's too many of them. So that's what you do in the fall. The classic is to cut the two. Ah, which two do I cut to? Well, that's where the art is. Which two do you cut? You know, do you, you want to cut this one or this one or this one or this one? There's 15 in here. But that's where the artist comes in. You want that branch to go like that, this way, and this way. You don't want them too close together. If you got a deformed one in there, you want to take the deformed one out. You got one that, that's you know, three inches longer than anything else, take that one out. Some are really tiny, take those out. You want two equal ones. So next year's growth from those two equals come out equally instead of real long and real short.
So the best way is to take a comp like this and then take the, I took a big piece out of the middle so I can open it up. So that one came out, there was about 10 that came out with that. And remember, I just want to get to two. So I'm going to take out the strong part on the end. Now I'm down to one, two, three, and there's two little tiny ones in here, five. So two little tiny ones I'm cut out. It's this size. Okay, but it's still one of these, it's just a real small one. Why is it small? Because it's like the little, the little mutt, the, the puppy in the litter, you know, the runt. You know, the big one's got all the sun and the hog all that energy and they got big and a little runt stayed the runt. But if you leave too many runts on there, you know, then the, the tree only has a little thing to survive for the whole winter with just a little thing like that. Because this is it. Once the, the needles open up, it's not going to grow anymore this year. So fall is when they mature. You can thin it out. I want to thin out the two. There's a little tiny one underneath I don't want. Come down to three. If this were, you know, plus you'd be plucking out some needles in here, and, and if someone asked me about needle plucking techniques, you know, hint, there's, there's a needle plucking technique, and I just plucked out one shoot I didn't want, so now I'm down to two, three. I actually got one little one underneath here. So these aren't the same size, but they're relatively close. So their offspring on the terminal bud there, that will elongate out the center bud, and then in the, in the Late winter, some more will come out from underneath that. But they're you know, relatively close to the same size. <clears throat> now, if I had, uh, let's see, I would leave sometimes like these two, they're much smaller rather than these two. These two, when I thin it out, will be on the bottom of the tree. These two will be on the top of the tree. So I have small shoots in the zone of strength, big shoots in the zone of weakness to balance the, the whole thing out again. So it's a common theme. Someone asked about needle plucking. I did, no one else asked that question. Needle plucking. <laughs> I'll show you how to pluck needles out of here. But then there's a count when you get to real professional conditions. In Japan, the real good trees, when you get ready for a show, the count was three, five, seven. And then when you have like a tree that's not bad, hey, Dennis, not, excuse me, given that one you just did the two, the two pieces to, it's up there in front. I think that's why I said it looks very similar. This passive yeah. one. This one? Yeah. Okay. This passive one. Yeah. Thank you. I just interrupted my whole train of thought here. No, I'm sorry. Ah, oh, damn, man. Like, that's okay. Talking about needle parking. That's like needles. Three, five, seven. Yeah. Okay. Three, five, seven. So these are the. Back in here is like the two-year-old needle. Right. Japanese black pine the needle is three years. So under Japanese black pine management, you very seldom have the third-year needle. They're all brown, and you probably cut, take those things out of there. On landscape tree, you know, on the bigger trees, the wind will knock them out during the fall. So first strong fall day, wind, you know, and then you find all these needles on the ground, that's the third-year needle falling out of Japanese black pine. In a bonsai, they don't fall out on their own. The wind doesn't hit it that way, so you gotta physically pull out these brown needles. So back in here is the third year needle, back in here is the second year needle. And since this is a new shoot, that's the first year needle. So in the fall, if you're in Japan working on a tree getting ready for the big show, there are just three pairs of needles. That's the three. And then if this were on the top of the tree, you go to three. The middle part of the tree, which is not as strong as the top, but stronger as the bottom, you go to five. And the bottom you pluck out and you leave seven pairs of needles. That's three, five, seven. Five, seven, nine. In our case, I would probably say, uh, since our trees aren't classically as strong as, as in their native environment in Japan, I would probably recommend like uh, 11, 13, 15. Why odd numbers? I don't know. It's just 
Uh, I don't know, I tell you the truth. Results. Yeah, it, it seems that, you know, I, I can, uh, yeah. but that, it doesn't have to be, it's still odd, I mean, mm -hmm. the reason, but then they don't have to be like 3, 5, 7. It could be 3, 7, 13. Depends on what the branch looks like. So it's not like, that's just the basic sequence, but. Keeping the balance. It, yeah, it varies from, you know, tree to tree, branch to branch. So this one I plucked, and I plucked it a certain way. Japanese black pine have two needles per set, and they're attached with this little white thing here on the bottom. I used to call it a sheath, you said it's a sheath, and it's wrong. You know, I had a, a partner said, so that's not a sheath, it's a fascicle. <laughs> but that's good, that's why I like, you know, I like to say things, you still think, you know, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. This is a case of terminology, but he says it's a fascicle. Fascicle. You know, what's so what's so important about the fascicle besides that it holds the two needles in place? There's a there's a bud that's inside of that. That's where you leave pairs of needles and the bud will come out right between the needles. So you had to leave some needles on If you have a real young tree, you could strip everything out of there and it'd probably break out adventitiously. Especially in the end parts. Back in here, when it gets older, it'll never break out. And you lose these needles anyway. So if you wanna that's that one wrong too. Okay. If you want to hedge a little bit, <coughs> you can just pull all the needles off, you know. <laughs> but if you want to save the fascicle, so you have three pair of needles, but then you want to save the fascicle in other areas, you pluck them out one, one needle at a time. And then it'll leave the fascicle intact. If you grab it like that all at one time, you pull the fascicle off, and then there's no but left there to, so just in case. It's not so important on Texas back pine, but if you work on Ponderosa pine, it's very important. They don't bud, plus they're collected trees, they don't bud like a Japanese black pine, so you have to, you know, there's directional pruning, you leave a needle here because you want the bud to come out that way. Or you leave the fascicle in place, and then there's a chance that there'll be a bud inside that fascicle. I better do something, huh? <laughs> you know, I know you gotta, some of you guys are going to go to the Shoheen Seminar that's in February coming up, 2020. Well, I'm, I'm doing a program there, but I, uh, I think I, I, I set the record. The last time I did a uh, Shoheen Trident Maple. Real nice one. You know, I've been growing that sucker for 30 years, and well, I'm going to donate this to the cause. It was like a, it was supposed to be a two-hour demonstration, it lasted like three and a half hours. He was well, that was a great demo. I didn't touch the tree one time. <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh, that was great, man. Yes, man, am I good, boy? <laughs> yeah, right, I better do something since this is on camera. <clears throat> Again, I, I'm not a bureau, I'm not an advocate of doing a lot of wiring. Uh, I used to. I just now, not because I'm lazy, but I, <laughs> I feel if you, if I start to wire, I start to control the tree too much. And I'm an old school guy. I want this relation between me and this material here. You rough it out, and then it starts to go over here, and I go that way. You know, if it, it wants to go this way, we go that way. You know, otherwise, if you get this kind of triangle in your mind, you, you, you wire, you put this branch here when it wants to go like that, then you could, you know, that's too much man over, over the tree instead of working together. But I gotta, I gotta do a lot of manipulation at first, and I gotta do a lot of wiring at the trunk of straight, and I wanna put an S-curve and I gotta, I gotta wire this thing. So I believe in that. 100% wire when the plant is young. I you know, one gallon nursery stop. But after that, I let it grow for three or four or five years, see what it wants to do and then go with it. But there are rules in bonsai, so I have to do some kind of work. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna get this top over the bottom. You can see now, big old ugly thing there. Yeah. Yes. I don't wanna dwell on that at first. I said, the good is the bottom. I'll have to somehow make this thing. Dennis. Yeah. Okay, from the time you planted it in the ground, how long did it take you to get it to be in the, into the pot? Uh, this particular way, it took about, um, it wasn't in the ground technically, it was in a... Container? Yeah, I put it in a five gallon container, but I just cut off the whole top part, just left that part of it. 
and then since it was growing from seed, you know, I didn't have the big roots to begin with. You just keep cutting the tap roots and other big things out there. But it took me about uh, 10 years to get into this pot. But from seed, I had to go from the flat yeah. to the, you know, four inch pot, one gallon, two gallon, five gallon. Slowly reduce. Yeah, and then I, but at the same time, I kept cutting out any obstructive roots because I knew it had to go in a flat pot one day. <clears throat> and when you see me twisting around like this, you know I don't know what the heck I'm going to be doing here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have, uh, uh, besides finding the good, which is the bottom, I mean, someone says find the front, that's important. But also it's like, uh, find the essence and bring it out. So this the trunk is the most important part, but the essence is going to be the bark. And then, in my way of looking at it, it's going to be the omoshiroi. You know, that's, that's the stuff that you remember my tree versus someone else's tree. You know, how many trees have you seen in exhibitions that go like this? You know, that's nice, that's nice. But it's one that has this kind of double back, a little hook in there sometimes, you know, that's when you remember. It's that, just different. So, I'm going to deal with this major flaw. It's a long branch here by, by pushing this whole piece back the other way. So it starts out like that, and then I can push this thing back so it, it, I'll create like a, a, a squiggly in there. It still won't be contrived, hopefully, but it just looks like, like only nature could do that in here. I manipulate the to do this. So I didn't cut too much out of here because I want to bend this first. <coughs> and then I just got this just so I can yank, yank a branch around. And then, uh, should I, could I wrap this thing around the trunk? And people tell me, you can't. Don't destroy the black bark on the Japanese black pine. But this is young. So I don't mind going over the bark in this case. But if it's an older, mature tree, then I would not do that. I'd have to set up a other kind of system, tie it into the drain hole, do other things. Or put wire on the tree. This is just a, a I'm just going to pull it over just so I can get an idea of what the heck I'm I can do in the future on this tree. So again, Dennis, when do uh, plates form on, on bark? Um, um, like the real plates, they'll form about, uh, it depends on the quality of the tree to begin with. So a Mikawa will plate up in about, uh, usually about 35 years. The bark will form, but then the plate is actually more bark. It's just one layer on top of another, on top of another, on top of another. That's the plate. So you look at a piece of bark that's that thick. It's old. But yeah, but it's, it's based on a, a 20 layers of bark. So this is just the first one on the bottom. It's kind of flaky. If it stays like this in another 20 years, it's, it's basically a throwaway. You know, in Japan, they're very cruel on this stuff. That's what we get. You know, if they're going to export them, they'll, they'll come to us. You know, we get a lot of the seconds, you know, like that. How many of you use uh, Aburakasu, the Japanese? Uh, rapeseed cakes, fertilizer in the cans. No one, well, it's just, uh, people use Akadama soil. These are their seconds. The, the fertilizer cakes are their seconds. The rapeseed cakes in Japan are oily. And you know that they're really, that's like the first pressing, you know, it's like, like virgin olive oil. The ones we get are dry, you know, that's like, all the good stuff is already gone, and then this is what's left, and it comes to uh, other countries. Oh, we got you know, these cakes in Japan, yeah, but they, they have no anywhere near the potency of, of the ones in Japan. And even the Japanese professionals are having trouble with the fertilizer now, because uh, rapeseed is real popular in organic stores now, or health stores. So they're getting more money there, so they don't go into fertilizer. <laughs> I'm going to try to hook it onto this little dead snag here. Okay. And that's just the first one. I'll keep moving it, moving it. But right now, can you see that uh, I've taken away this, this gap? Mm -hmm. I bent this branch back this way. And from here, there's enough on the end. I'll, I'll cut everything off and I'll keep on going back that way. So the branch will be like this, like this, and like that but all in the context of a small, squatty tree. <clears throat> and I 
they're still kind of like, how do I figure out the butt? I mean, you know, there's a butt and this is huge. <laughs> so, you know, I, if this were in the ground, I would shave that whole thing off. Just take a saw and just, you know, there's a little skinny thing here. I'll just take the whole piece out like that and kind of create some taper. But if it's young, it will have a tendency to, it probably mean it totally callous, but it'd be good enough. It's not like a uh, deciduous tree where you have to make a nice clean cut. And it has to callus because in the winter silhouette, the wounds are show. A pine, the bark are actually formal with some of that stuff. You know, plus it's in a bag, you can hide it in the bag. Well, ah, your tree should look good from all directions. I like, ah, forget it, man. Especially in shows, you know, they're not on a rotisserie, they're, they're against a backdrop. <laughs> so you can hide all that stuff in the bag. Okay, so I'm gonna, the way I can do this is I'm not gonna slice this thing off. Maybe at home, and if I had another 15 years, I would slice it off, put it in a growing box, and let it callus over. In this case, I'm gonna take a branch here and put it on top of the butt. So I can kind of hide it. It's this branch here. I'm gonna bring it, I'm gonna bring it down and put it on top of the butt. And then it's like, a, it's a deception. You know? I'll make the branch look nice so that you don't see the butt underneath it. But from the front, you can't see the butt. You just see the big basal flare here. Well, I'm just making this up as I go. Why well, sound pretty good? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the heck I'm doing here? If you push your blood on the butt, is there a chance it will fuse to the butt? No, not on pine. <clears throat> but on a deciduous, like a trident maple, it, 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 it can. And I'm not sure if I want it to fuse on the butt. Because what happens is you draw attention to the area that you don't want people to, you know, look at. So, oh, that's a nice fusion. Oh, look at the butt. <laughs> but I have a trident maple at home. It's on a rock, and it's fused all around on the rock. You know, it's a, you know the, the trident maple, the trunk is about this big. But then over the years, it took 20 years, but that thing just fused all the way. It's, it's kind of covering the rock. This one was done properly, so I learned well. I put it on, on a, a real hard, dense, you know, almost an eel river type stone. Because it's like a bowl constrictor after a while. You put it on a, a piece of lava or you know, some softer rock, granite, you will crush it. So you see a lot of trees in the Japanese books. They're exposed roots. It's like a bow-legged root system. Because there used to be a rock there, and the rock broke. But, you know, they use this part, and it's okay, it's an exposed root, but you can tell that there used to be a rock there. Okay, I got, a, I got the plan here. You know, there's always a time where you step, get close, and you should bail out, boy. <laughs> Don't come up with too many great ideas. Man. And then there, there's a need to wire, if you wish, on a contemporary style. Whoever gets this tree, you know, you don't, you're not beholden to the fact that I'm an old school guy and have to keep it that way. I have about 100 trees at home, but they came from the old Japanese American uh, teachers in Northern California. Most of them were pretty prominent. So it's my, I have to keep it in their style. I gotta maintain their personality in that tree. And then I can't uh, do any sophisticated uh, contemporary style work on it. It's a disservice, it's like art. That's just, I have to leave it as folk art. It's a thing that this existed in the 50s, 60s, 70s, until the early 80s, and now it's gone. Mm -hmm. They're all gone. All the pines made in Northern California, they're all dead. And then we kill them. People try to do, you know, wow, we didn't need Akadama soil, and this soil's no good, they bare rooted these trees. Or they push them too hard, they do this, and the wire, you know, and then all the shoes die. You don't see any of these things around Northern California. And I got a hundred of them, or 75 of them. I can't even pass them along. I want to pass them along, but how many people out here actually practice the old way? Well, I want that tree, but then you'll be, something sticks up, and your tendency is to put a wire on and bend it back down in here, like a bad hairdo, man. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, that, that gives you the chance to make it unique, make it almost shit you know within a context of a three-foot aesthetically pruned tree in a pot that's called a bonsai. Speaking of soil, what is your mix that you're using? Okay. It's a, in the pine, it's, it's like a, mm, I use a lot of perlite. 
which everybody is ah, paralyzed. That's terrible. There's a little white thing in there. But I live in a cool climate, foggy environment. I found that perlite keeps a lot of heat in the soil. So before I used perlite, I used DG, decomposed granite, I used lava, and the soil mass was too cool. I never got good roots, and I get root rot, or I get yellowing on the needles. But uh, I'm having trouble right now because the climate is changing. It got, it got to be like uh, in El Cerrito last year and this year, two times it got to 90 degrees. 90 degrees, you know? It's, it's like if you live in the Central Valley, you know, and 100 degrees is nothing. But the trees acclimatize to that. You live in a fog belt, and all of a sudden it gets to be 90 degrees like in three days. From fall, from 55 to 90, the trees, you know, I had a lot of damage on my trees last year. So Yeah, so I, I, this year I only had like three trees were damaged out of 500. Because I watered two to, up to three times a day because of my soil mix. Perlite, I use uh, fir bark, which is orchid bark. And then it depends on the age of the tree and the style of the tree, how much work has been done. If it's young stock, I use maybe uh, three, uh, three-eighths to maybe, or one quarter inch diameter aggregate size for stock. I, I want a bigger root so I can pump the tree, get it strong, get a bigger trunk, callus the wounds. And by the time I get to a refined tree, I bought, uh, bought the, uh, these aggregate size by the diameter of uh, one-eighth of an inch. Perlite bark, and then when I get to that point, I, use, I do incorporate lava, cinders, whatever you want to call them. I use the black one. I used red before, that was the basic one we used to get, but it's, it's always got dust in it. I washed it three or four times, use it, and when you repot, there's a fine layer of red um, dust on the bottom, right up, impermeable, impermeable layer there. And the water won't penetrate because it gets to be so hard. But the black one seems to be, I don't know if it's a higher, uh, denser or, or stronger one, but it doesn't break apart like that. Why you need the lava at that point? Because I need the roots to ramify. Use perlite bark or sand, the root will go right through that and stay strong. But once you hit something with jagged edges, the root will split. You know, split and split and split. And that's what gets you a healthy tree. You get like, it starts out with a, a buttress root and it splits and it splits. The more you can ramify that, the more ends you have to take in water. And that's, you get more water than you can water, you can fertilize and more chance of intake into the tree. So the soil size, the makeup of it, people use Akadama, which is okay. It's like the miracle soil from Japan. It doesn't work that well in my yard. So I don't use it. It, it seems to retain a little bit too much water for me. I need maximum drainage. But I have to water a lot. But before last year, I didn't have to water that much. Sometimes I go a whole week without water. You know, it, it's... It, yeah, everybody knows about San Francisco in the summertime. I live right across the bay from San Francisco. I live northeast of San Francisco. The fog comes through the Golden Gate in a northeast pattern. So I'm the second city that gets the fog. And you can see it coming through the Golden Gate because there's a hill system, you know, along the coast. There's only a couple places where there's a break. One is up in the Sonoma County area, and one is like a San Bruno Mountain. South San Francisco, <laughs> that's why you see so much controversy about the old giant stadium, Candlestick Park. Oof. That was right there, you know, hey, they put this in the, right where there's a gap at the, in the hills, and the fall comes right in there. Then the other gap is the Golden, Gate, the Golden Gate Bridge area. So I can see it, you're sitting there, and it takes about, once you see it coming, it just streams through real fast, and you wait about a half hour and hit you in the face. You know, right now, so you know, here it comes, boom. <laughs> You know, he's a mustache, they get all wet. <laughs> okay, so now, hopefully, you know, I, I've taken away some of the butt, and I start to move this branch, I can take away this. And the third area is how to squash the top down so I can kind of make it, it'll still be long and legged like that, but I need to squash it down so that it won't be too pronounced. Okay, can we take a break right now? Take a break? Yeah. Sure. Okay, we'll take a little break, guys, come on up and left. I just want to remind everybody about the convention coming up, and uh, October the 24th, 27th, July 1st is registration time. So if you're gonna take classes, the first month we'll probably get classes. If you wait too long, you're not gonna get in. Like that guy right over there, <laughs> sells out within 24 hours. So if you wanna take Peter's class, you better sign up fast.
<laughs> and why are you doing that? I'm just trying to figure this out. Yeah, so come on up and take a look. Uh, Greg's back here. He'll be selling raffle tickets. Don't forget, that's in the raffle. I, I'm so experienced. I had to figure it out when I first saw it. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. That's why we came up here. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, nice. Good so much, Ron. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I heard the email. It's just because the reception. So yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Not that only that, you got a personal seat license. Yeah. Yeah. You have to pay fifteen thousand, twenty thousand dollars for the privilege of buying a season ticket. So that's an extra cash that they got. So you know, she didn't want to do that. Plus they jacked the price of the double. And, uh, you know, you get the San Francisco. Yeah, serious treatment. We're happy. It's uh, fine. And then, uh, I guess the Lakers have something they pull into. Yes, okay. They gave away a lot of young to me, right? Do you want to I got a one. Glad to see you. You still in uh, Duarte? Yep. Right. Is that how you found out Duarte? Duarte. 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 It's Duarte Road. Duarte. In but I like Arcadia. Duarte better. She sounds more French, huh? Duarte. Yeah. Duarte. <laughs> okay. Very, very good. How are you doing? See you. Mm -hmm. uh, can you see some of the problems in the tree? But I'll be able to reveal it when I send it out. The double bag, and I'll, I'll put a little more tension on the branch to get into the spot that I want. Yeah, that looks good. So it's a disguise. I can't take away the, the long gawky part, but I can bend it down. Okay, and then. Uh, the next part is a lot of thinning. So since a lot of people don't have a lot of pine experience, and I'm not gonna, you know, I don't, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time answering questions that don't come up. <laughs> but you know, if I talk about uh, uh, decaling sequence, and this changes year to year. You might do this this year. It might look like that next year, and it might look like something else the year after that. Funky here. Yeah. Funky That's what almost it is. But it's, it's kind of like, it's artistic and tasteful. Black pine thing. That's tasteful, but not funny. <laughs> <laughs> but not funny. Hot <laughs> 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 You just want to appreciate this art. Yeah. High art, yeah. Yes, man. I, got, I got this vision, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, you know, a lot would reveal when I thin it out. Did you wire any of no. this before? That, no. So that just, did it naturally? I just bent it back in. Well, I just bent it back in. But how did you bend it? Well, it, it's just pliable enough. I folded it over and I tucked it into right. another branch to hold it in place. How many years ago did you do it? Well, these, you know, I, I made a gentleman a sequence. Maybe the first one I did was about 10 years ago. I see. And then every year something sticks out. Uh, maybe I can use it. I just stuck it in there. But no wires. No wires. No wires. You just cut it and then you bend it. I didn't even cut it. I, I just bend it. Just bend it. Yeah. It's about the size of a pencil. It's very fine. Uh, but you know, if you bend it out here and there's nothing to hold it, then you have to wire it. Uh, I bend it and tuck it in here, and it gets, you just snag it underneath another branch. And it, because I had just like a, I had a growing grounds on the front, so I, I had a lot of things to do. I didn't have time to work on. Stop. <laughs> Get these they don't even sell those anymore. That I know. particular brand. I know. Well, the company went out of business. Uh, Amazing, you know, it was in popular. Japan, yeah. yeah. They don't sell it in the stores there. Yeah. yeah. So I use I these because they're, they're functional. But you know, because I travel and I don't want people to rip off my my Masakuni tools in my truck. Okay. You know, so I just bring stuff that. Uh, you know. Yeah, but those are great. Yeah. So it's like you know, I made that cut. You see, that's why I call my bleeding. You know, it's getting so sticky. It's just pouring out of the room. That's pitch. Yeah, you know, my hands will turn black after a while. But that's a healthy tree. And you smell this thing. 
in a room with him. It's pitch around. Pitch is different than sax. I'll explain that too. The difference between the two. Pitch is just... Oh, I get too much gunk in my tweezers, so I have to kind of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hope you're learning something. There is that word. Oh, yeah, I'll ask. <laughs> but that's what I, I like to think that's how I am. I've always approached my work, my tree pruning work, and my bonsai that way. You know, I don't like so-called cookie cutter stuff. You don't like just like this. Yeah, but everything looks the same. I, you know, I, I'm different. You're different. I want to project my personality and things. I am almost shitoy as far as I'm concerned. I have a lot of fun. I do a lot of goofy things, but I am very serious. Like, when I was the president of Golden State Bonsai Federation, I was serious. We, we did the board meeting with levity. But we got a lot of things done. You know, you can't sit there and be a goofball and get nothing done. Or I, I, I was, you know, I formed this tree pruning organization in Northern California. You know, these are these are students that study with their friends with me. They formed their own organization, professional organization. But it was their lives and their career. I right? so couldn't screw that up. I, you know, if they train with me, then it's my responsibility. To, help them as much as I could. So I, I just kind of squished everything in. So I, I bent this down. You know, if that has a little break in, that's okay. It just looks kind of like natural. Maybe snow was sitting on that. But, you know, I brought the branch in so I can hide this part. There's a long neck, so I brought this down to hide the neck. I'm slowly putting this on top of the butt. This branch. See your style? I've never seen that before. Sorry. You probably never see it again either. No, I, no that, I, I see what you're, what you're saying, how people wire it out and they bring it this way and bring it that way. I've never seen this technique before. Yeah, that's all, you know, it's it awesome. took me, it took awesome. me yeah. 30 years to figure out what I wanted to do. Yeah. No, that's, that's but if you see something like that, it looks interesting. Yes. Then, you know, I hope I, you can I, think I about me. That's different than your unusual stuff, man. That's cool. Okay, and then I will, once I thin it out, you'll be able to see the, the bigger branches. Yeah. So, you know, I, I couldn't thin it out without putting the branch in place. You know, if I it was over here and I thin it out and thin it out, man, it's gonna left that one. That's why it's done in the same Can I get you some snacks? No, no, I'm fine. The fruit or watermelon? The water's fine. Okay. That's it. I'm just gonna do some more exploratory cuts here and I'm satisfied that. About five more minutes, I'm calling that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, your technique, I love that, man. Oh, that's, that's good. But, but you're I, throwing the branches and I said, wait, you got to pass that around, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, you like this. I hope I don't see you too oh, much man. more, man. Oh, that is, no, that is cool, man. I hope it's just... The Japanese is like high. That's the density. It's incredible. Yeah, huh? <laughs> yeah cheer, cheer, cheer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, that's, uh, that's, that's a good quality seen. pine. But there's another one called Yatsabusa. Yeah, Yatsabusa. Yeah, but that's like a multi buddy one, but that's different than this. This is just, it could be thinned out and, and be kind of all right. I just let it grow. But Yatsabusa is a true cultivar that, that extremely multi buddy They just make lousy bonsai. People like it as a short needle, yeah. but then they form these knuckles and knots. Oh, uh, yeah. That, that it's a lot of work. So. That looks ugly on a tree. This one, once I thin it out, it will, it will, it will be dense, but not this dense. This hasn't been thinned out in that, 20 a, years. That's a, that's a, that's a, so that's the, that's why I said, find the good. That that's was why the, I had to ask you, how long did it take you to get it in there? That yeah. thing is, man, that's massive. But that's, you that's, can see the root system is shallow because it got it in here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, that's, and then, this tree will be going through some adjustments of, from where it's been growing for all these years. Yeah, so, right. right. That is correct. Yeah, so that's yeah. a big change for yeah. this. So if you're gonna, if you live in Uplands, if you live in Long Beach, whoever gets the tree, then if you want to discuss it with me. Yeah. You know, then, That's a good point. That if you live in Riverside, you yeah. know, you're going to burn up. Point. That's a dramatic change. Keep it in the shade for a while. Yeah. And then in fall, then you change into the mix that you feel is appropriate. Yeah. But if you live down in yeah. San Pedro yeah. or yeah. the foggy area, it's a little warmer, but then <coughs> the soil can take it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
but this one was grown from seed, and then it's from a pedigree parent, and it has a history to it. Right. If you think my name is worthy of attaching to it, then you know, that's part of the history. But if you want to say that's part of uh, Mr. Mitsuya and his father's, you know, it's like a historical seed. Right. No, tremendous history. Yeah, so it's like, uh, what a generous guy. I mean. <laughs> if, it, if it comes out real good, <laughs> but you don't know when you do this kind of almost style. You've been it around. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It still might be a hunky I, I just heard you say something about how it took you 30 years to figure out what you want to do with yeah. it, which I'm sure has got some humor in it, but I think there's some trees in that, for sure. Like, I look at some of the trees I just keep around, and I'm not sure what I'm doing with it, but uh, I like that. Yeah, you give yourself that space, you know? So many people are in a rush. But. That's right, and then it, it, you have to take you out of the equation. Yeah. What it is, you let the tree tell you what to do. Yeah. You just leave it alone for a while, it starts to grow, and then go with it. Yeah. Then you'll be, you know, the tree is going with you, you're going with the tree, and then you come up with this product that is not fighting itself right. later on. But you, know, you have to. But it's might, also unique and you know, special for something. That's right. And then, you know, by, along the way, I found that I like that. And then uh, I wanted to, I solved a lot of problems with the old trees. Yeah. Because uh, even though they were old and natural looking, but there were some tragic flaws according to bonsai. Yeah. Big branches with no, no needles, it was all on the end. Right. And then you're stuck. Yeah. It's a finite look. It will never pop back in here. Right. So it's just longer and then it'll be flawed in 20 years to the point where you either got to cut it off or, yeah. you know, it, it, yeah, gin it or be a grade C tree instead of a grade A tree. Yeah. So I try okay, to do these things to, to solve the problem. Yeah. yeah, so I could do that. I could do this. I had a big old reverse taper on the branch. Yeah. I took my knob, cut it, cut off the armpit area. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then it, it hides it. You know, it's not like on the top where you do it like that, kind of contrived. Yeah. You know, and then I, by doing that, I could pin this branch down like that. You know, and then it, it, I got this kind of branch to look yeah. out of it instead of this look. Okay, well, good. You know, that's, that's the point you're making, and I'm glad that you, again, uh, a seat so we could, uh, you understand what the heck I'm trying to do, whether you pull it off or not. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, smoke a mirror on this one, huh? Yeah, I hope it comes out that way. <laughs> but I will, uh, I'll do some thinning out and plucking. Did he do anything wrong? Yeah. yeah, I just took out a little, just un un fluffed the fluffy areas. But nothing where I can make uh, uh, a real good decision until I, I can see the curves. Yes. And then I know which one to keep, which one to take out. I can see people more interested in desserts than they are in a uh, masterful presentation on time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm recording, it's okay, they can rewatch oh, it. Oh my goodness. Okay, I got it. Okay. Joe. Oh. We're going to start. Okay. So part of thinning it out now, I, I made some, during the break, I just made some casual thinning on these compounds. Nothing, it just opened it up a little bit. But I can't make the definitive cuts until I can thin it out more and see exactly how the branches are going. If there's a curve in the, you know, where I created, I thinned this thing down to create a curve, I'm gonna show that. You know, it's like, this is ugly. Look at over here, look at this. <laughs> I got a big butt. Oh, look at, look at this. Look at my arm. Look at my ear. I'm like, uh, in this case, I bent this thing down so you see how this thing is hooked over. Right here, there's a big hook on it. So that's going to be in the back, but it still has this kind of interesting curve in there. But I have to keep some of these things around it because 
it's like a, I don't want to open up too much or else I expose something I'm trying to down, you know, downgrade as far as aesthetics. Some areas are going to open up because it's in front of what is good. Some areas are going to open up because it's in front of the zigzag. In some areas I'm going to keep a little, not so fluffy, but obviously I'm trying to hide something, but I'll keep a, a strategic shoot here and there just so I can fall in some area that I don't want you to look at. Dennis, do you apply the Amoshiroi concept when a tree is like lacking interest or character, or you, do you do it intentionally, like you said, because you want people to remember it and, um, you know, just to kind of have, like to have some fun with it? Yeah, uh, it's, it's a combination. If it has some characteristics already, then I'm going to enhance it. If it doesn't take away from the character of the tree. So keep in mind, like uh, in an area, we have a lot of redwoods. So the maximum form of redwood is like this, you know, this taper, it's a choke on form. Branches like that. The, if the trunk is straight, the branches are straight. In your bonsai basis, <coughs> if you have a curved trunk, the branches should be curved. If you can't have a curved trunk and straight branches, it's just like illogical. Whatever curves the trunk is going to curve the branches. So if I had a redwood that had a real curvy branch, it could be almost shadow, but in the context of the tree, it's out of place. You look at the branch instead of the tree. So if there's no interest in the tree, I will create interest, if I can. But I'm not gonna go to the point where it's not interesting and I can't do almost shadow without making contrived, I won't do it. I just have to classify my mind. This tree here, my best tree, is a level nine. <coughs> really out of 10, it's, it's almost there. This tree is only capable of a level four. Get the four, enjoy it. You know, it has a story to it somehow, if you kept it. The ugliest tree I have in my, my collection, it's ugly. It's a lace leaf maple, and it is ugly. I started that thing 38 years ago, it was one of my first trees. I screwed it up 38 years ago, and it's still screwed up. <laughs> but it's my first one, I gotta keep it. It's not even almost at all, it's just ugly. You try to find a good. Uh, it's old. But yeah, this is my first one, so that I uh, behold. I mean, that, that's just, uh, I'm I'm very partial to it. So if it's there, if it's really there, then you just forget the rest of the tree. You just bring it out. That's the whole tree. And if it's not there, and there's something capable of doing it, like this long branch, I can twist it back that way. I will create that. If this is a flaw in a pine, a long branch with nothing here. It's a tragic flaw. It can never be resolved unless you graft. Well, graft, you know, that sounds good. You know, a lot of my best friends and cohorts you know, are excellent grafters. The drawback in general, all of us who are novice bonsai people beside grafting, you have a tendency to keep grafting back in here. And it's a perfect branch, perfectly perfect. The drawback is there's no almost at all in that. But there's no negative space. So this is too much space, but sometimes there's a gap in here. Instead of putting a branch in there, you keep the gap, and that's the artistic negative space. You know, there's, there's, if there's a gap in the tree right here, and you want to put a branch there, people put a branch there, but sometimes the gap is the space. That's more important. It's the negative rather than the positive branching. So I'm looking in here, I'm looking for almost to it, but I'm, I also am trying to figure out where's going to be the space. I can't scrunch all this stuff together and make it a, you know, a, a squiggly ball. I will definitely make some openings in there someplace. And then, the reason I have to wait to this point, because I'm satisfied I got most of these things squenched in. It wasn't like this major break where I had to raffia the branch. I don't even use raffia on my stuff. If you use raffia, generally, you know, that does protect the, the cambium on it on a branch, especially on collected junipers and stuff. But I'm the, I'm the slow, I'm not patient. I just, just the way I, I can keep the tree alive and healthy. I got a business branch from here to here. I'll do that. I'll wait three months to do that. I'll wait six months to do that. Keep doing, keep doing, doing. It might take me five years. I'll get there. But I did it slowly and patiently and then I didn't have to protect this thing. And oh, by the way, you know, I might have cracked the cambium without knowing it or anything, you know, then it's, it's dead. But, you know, this is my hobby. I'm not sitting in my yard every day checking things. I go on vacation. I go, I go on 30 vacations a year. You know, being that it's three to seven days. I go to Hawaii about five times a year. 
I come down here about five times, three to five times a year. Okay, but I'm gonna make some more cuts now. And then, this I wanna bring out. So I'm gonna leave it bare here. And I'm gonna take out some of the other stuff. I wanna show you the hook. You know, I said that's what I think is nice. Flaunt it. Bring it out. But I can't be so fancy that it takes away from the, the trunk of the tree. <clears throat> this has a lot of. Uh, mm, this is the, these are the tricky cuts. <laughs> Do you jam them on it? No. Fine. No. Fine. Is it because they're pretty stiff? No, because the pines that we work on are all fairly young, and uh, uh, the rings are loose. So when the rings are loose, it's soft wooded, the gym will never hold. You know, rod out on you, break off, and then uh, take it. So if you had a collected ponderosa, you could do that. Or collect a lodgepole, something that you collect, and then they're dwarfed. Because then the rings are so tight because of the negative growing conditions for these plants. So when it's tight like that, it, it's, you know, it'll hold the gym longer. If you live in an area that's humid, that's not good. You know, rot it out. <clears throat> so you could, you could gin a field grown or a pot grown tree, but don't expect that to gin to last. That's right. So if that's part of the instant look, that you're doing a demo, and that's, I don't do demos that way. I never finish. Unless the tree is 75% finished, and then I'll complete it. If it's just a raw stock, I'll, I'll do 25% stock. Oh, yeah. If it's like uh, this case, you know, since it's been in my yard for, you know, in my hands for 29 years, I, you know, I know that it's very strong, but this is not finished, but I, I got the trunk to be the size I wanted. So I feel I can do more work on this one. And plus the root ball has been already cut back. So I did it in a sequence. You know, I, I, since I started from seed, I was able to get in the pot faster, but I didn't have to decapitate this tree. But I did take out a lot of these branches on the bottom that were escape branches. And I took them out in a sequence. <clears throat> but you know, if you make a gin out of these things, oh, that's artistic. But they don't last. And then it, it, if you base your whole design on a gin that's not going to last, you're an idiot. I like the Yamadori, it's great. But that's right. You're it, just, yeah, or Dell's Impressa. Wow, look at this person did this thing. You know, it took this real ugly thing and it looks beautiful now. But sometimes they just die on you right there. You know, a lot of that, I used to rail against a lot of my, I used to do a lot of demos. I was always on the program. You know, I was very fortunate. I did, you know, I, I worked, I, I did demos in for the European Bonsai Association in Spain, Italy. Uh, I, I was assistant to Mitsuya and, and Suzuki Toto in Japan. You know, I've done uh, 35 states, all the major symposiums we have around the United States. And I'm always on the program with somebody that has a chainsaw. It's okay, that was popular. But they always think that we're the opposites. They always put, you know, they put us on the stage as a contrast. You know, I'm thinking like, oh, trust me, you know, in five years we'll get there. And there's other people with this instant gratitude. You know, this thing is beautiful tree. You know, wired out. And all this thing was cut off, like 80% of it was cut off, wired out. Some people actually repotted them too. And one thing I, I got... Uh, until you get known for certain things. I got, uh, I got slammed a couple times because I did one in Texas. It was a Texas uh, Lone Star on-site convention. And this guy from Europe, he was from the Netherlands, he was really good, you know, one of the top guys out there. <clears throat> and then I knew I was, yes, as far as a stylist, I was nowhere near him. But we're you know, doing a simultaneous demo, we're co-headliners. Cool so don't mess with me, man. I, I figured out a plan here, and I got him at the end, boy. Don't mess with me. I, I'm a nice guy, I don't wish to hurt, but if you cross that line, boy, I got a long memory, boy. <laughs> I find out where you live. So I set the whole thing up. It was like a 4D convention. We had like three workshops, and then the demo was on Saturday night. So all my workshops, I kept, you know, like 10 of you in this one, and next time 10 of you in that one. And, I kept saying, yes, it's the long term. That we're not in for instant gratification. You prune the tree too hard, or if it's not healthy enough, you kill it. You watch demonstrators on stage, they do too much, and the tree is actually dead on stage, and you win it. Uh. And then you internalize. You bring it home, and like five months, like, junipers could stay green for a year. 
They're actually dead. They just stay green for a year. They're not alive. They're just green. And then you look at the thing, and all of a sudden, one day, the thing turns brown, like in 24 hours. You know, but it was actually dead a long time ago. So I kept setting this up. You know, I just kept telling it, take your time. This is stop. We're going to take out only this much on this one, or this the Zeta books. I'm going to do that much. And then I said, in the second year, you, I said, well, we got to this point. In the second year, I would suggest you take this, 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 and this, and this off. Yeah. In the third year, you take that, 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 and that, and then we got it. It took three years to take out all these branches, but we took them out in the sequence. Of course, the tree has to respond for you to do that. If it don't respond, the system didn't do nothing. If it responds tremendously, then instead of doing three years, you could short it to two years. But the tree will tell you, am I happy, am I healthy or not? So I was sitting there, and I, all these guys are already in the audience, and I'm sitting there doing my demo, and it was a... It was a pine. And then when I finished, uh, you know, this is, it was in the BCI magazine. My tree, you know, and I, had, I had too many branches in here, and I had like, like tinsel on there. I had, I had five branches that had green strings on it, green and then I had five branches with red. You're sitting out there, and, and another guy, this, this is a beautiful, you know, work. Yeah. And then, but I said, they don't tell you that in the magazine. They don't tell you that Dennis said during the demo that the ones with the green string, you cut off next year if the tree is healthy enough. And all the ones with the red string, you cut off from the last one. Uh -huh. It took you three years to create this nice tree, but the stock was collected. The stock is nice. You know, you don't want to screw it up. And then this guy over here, he finished and, you know, smoking a cigar, really, really <laughs> happy. And someone said, you know, well, if that were your tree at home, would you have done that much work? The heck no. It would have taken about five years. And so this one says, well, well, how come you did it here? Because he says, it's like, it's like a dog and pony show. That's what you want me to do. Yeah. That's what you want to see, the finished product. So someone says, well, you know, if that's the case, you think the tree's going to make it? He said, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> so you get that little raffle thing. Well, I had a full can, and this guy had like three in there. <laughs> so don't mess with me. And don't mess with me. <laughs> yes, uh, well, my trees, you know, I always, in those days, I kept track of everybody who wanted a tree, my tree, you know, and keep, you know, how's it doing, you know, and I, if you live in Minnesota, I'll come on and look at it, you know, if you want, you know, so it's like, uh, it's, I come with the tree sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful what you wear, people. Yeah. <laughs> the Godfather's coming. <laughs> With a chainsaw. Now remember, if it dies, it's not my fault. At the Riverside Convention, they came over with a gorgeous California juniper. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. And it worked out. They finally got done. No, they're on the whole top. A couple of little branches coming out the bottom. So what did you do? It's supposed to ruin a thousand dollar tree. And now it's worth 50 cents. It's a modern style. What we, what we do whatever we want to do. And some people are really good you know, it, it, as professional bonsai people, but if they take it home and care for it as a professional for one year, then that's, that's kind of acceptable. But if you give it to somebody who's a novice at this or bonsai less than 20 years, Expect them to keep this alive. Plus, you, you've moved it from one environment to the other. It's been uh, moved, It's been in a hotel for a week. You put it in your vehicle, it's rocking and rolling in there. Yeah, it, it's uh, very difficult. So, I, like I said, this one I'm sure that I could take out 50 percent. But what I'm doing is just slowly thinning out some of these branches here, so it be less, less like this. You know, and I will clean it out a little bit more. Now, there's two things you do that they are almost diametrically opposed to each other as far as what you're trying to do. Now, in a classic where you clean out the bottom line, and that's okay for this stage. I want to clean out the bottom line, so those are, if they have needles, they have a potential to produce a bud underneath. But in, you know, in nature, or in this, this case of one side, they will be underneath the branch and they'll die, lack of light. Once in a while, they get this one that just wants to live. They'll you know, crawl around and get to the light. That's almost shit oil, then I'll cut this part off. No. That's the story, man. It's like, and you have to give you the view of the image that there used to be a branch here, it died off, and this is the one that survived. 
And that, that's part of storytelling on the bonsai part. So that, that's what I'm doing here. Almost should I, but you know, I, I can do you a whole lecture on Japanese black pine. Uh, I, I wrote out this manual one time. I didn't write it out. This guy named Greg Cloyd did. I did a presentation for uh, called the International Bonsai Symposium. It was in uh, Rochester, New York, Bill, Bill Valavanis's. It's a very slick operation, and very professionally run. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, he, he accorded me one of the highest honors that I could ever receive. Uh, it's like, uh, he said that he's in charge now of the International, of the, uh, the Northern California Bonsai Collection Museum or something. It was like, uh, he has an annual show. So people right now say send trees to the show in New York. He'll come pick it up for you. He sends a semi around, picks up all these trees from Oregon and yeah. other places. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, it, it, for the last one, be, before he did this one, the last one was the false symposium. He said he wanted what he considered the, the five uh, best teachers in the United States. Yeah, he included me in that. So great. You know, quite an honor. Yay! Yeah. Hey, you guys believe everything. What an easy group, man. <laughs> yeah, he's my uncle. <laughs> no, it was like myself, Kathy Shaner, David DeGroote. He, he was the curator of the Warehouser. I knew David when he was in New Orleans. And of course, Bill Valavanis. I can't even remember. The fifth guy was a guy from England, Peter Warren. <clears throat> but he, you know, and it was, the whole symposium was set up where it was like a big place like this, but the first two rows were all tables. With with uh, you know people who have tablets, because, uh, people really studious were in the front. It was set up that way. The rest were just chairs. That's all the note takers in the front. But by trying to bring this area out, I want to show this this hook, this part, without you know flaunting it. Right? If this were like a real crummy base, then I would you know make this even more prominent. But in time, I would squeeze it, squeeze it in even more. I just brought it to this point, it's good enough. And then I said that, that, that needle plucking on the bottom, I don't care if I pull the fascicle off because I don't, I don't really, at this point, I don't want to butt on the bottom. But somehow, I get this miracle shoot coming out one time, and you keep that on, on a, like a bottom branch or a branch that's long and naked like that, if something breaks out here, you can actually cut this part off and make a new branch that way. The younger one has a tendency to break back. The old one won't. So if you got something here, you have to kind of bend it down. But if you got one breaking from the bottom like that, I have to kind of bend it out and nurture it so it gets to the sunlight. If it gets strong enough, then I'll cut this off. And that's how I can bring the ends back and, and start with another one. But the transition is logical and you know, easy on the eyes instead of going really jarring look. <clears throat> can you see that this is the interesting branch in the back now? I think it's interesting, but it was like out here and I twisted it back in. But I not only twisted it back in, but I brought this part of it on top of the plug. And then with more wire, more, more bringing, you bring this down and you hide the plug. You know, so I, I just want to get to the place and if we had time I would do it, if not, then just, I don't care if you wire, tie it down, wire it if you want, but this tree has never had wire per se on the branch. So, you know, if you want to do that, that's okay. Sharpening lights <laughs> Yeah, I'm satisfied that the, I, I've hit enough of the top part. I'm going to thin out this front part. I'm just doing a few cuts and I'll spin around so you can see what the heck I'm doing. What I'm looking for is actually some uh, flaws that I could take out now that, that don't qualify as omoshidoi. Flaws like in there on a knuckle. I can't cut the knuckle all the way off yet, but I might cut off these three on the knuckle so the knuckle won't get any better. And then if I get butt breaking, then I can just take the knuckle off.
And uh, I, I believe that I was always, uh, no matter what I did in my career, or like when I was an uh, officer at Golden State Bonsai Federation, I thought it was best to go all out. And I used to love the Lone Ranger, man, when I was uh, growing up. My favorite? Yes, I used to. I go up there, all out. It's like the Makashima tornado hits you. And then just kick ass, and then get out. Never go for a second turn, never hang around, just get out. So this is the perfect time for me to get out of the public bonsai aspect. You know, I've had a great 38 year run. I was actually foolish enough. I started 38 years ago and I did my first dem demonstration 38 years ago. And there's some really dumb people out there, man. In my area, there's a, there's a city called Richmond. There's a lot of little satellite cities, you know, Berkeley, El Cerrito, Albany, Richmond, Hano, El Sobrante. And then there was like an Asian cultural fair. And they, they had somebody, a real famous woman do with the Ikebana. And somebody else did, uh, you know, it was Asian art there. So everybody who did some Asian art things, taiko drums. They had no one to do bonsai. So, hey, I heard you do bonsai. I'm like, ah. You know, I took five lessons. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you do a demo for us? You know, the people are there, they just want the, you know, the Asian food and stuff. They don't care. You know, I, I said, well, this artist got to be dumber than me. So if I just explain one of the lessons I just got from my first, it was a form of art, it was the first lesson I, I got from Masi Mazzoli. One gallon can, juniper. <clears throat> I did a little demo on, you know, and explained, you know, bounce on the outside part of the curve, not on the inside part. Why not inside part? Because that goes inside the can the tree and dies off anyway, so this is the rule of nature. You know, and informal upright is the basic form. The top's gotta be over the bottom, and the base is gotta be like that, and, <clears throat> and blah, blah, blah. And people, oh, I had five lessons. <clears throat> So I'm not gonna go, you know, I'm not gonna come to you know, this club and after five lessons and do a bonsai demo. But you know, for the public, it was fine. And I, I, I also found out that, and I'll explain to this in, at the Shohin Symposium coming up uh, in February. <coughs> There's some things that I take a lot of credit for. I mean, I, I have worked on a lot of pines, a lot of maples, a lot of you know, domestic trees you find in the Bay Area. Crab apples, flowering cherries, mysterious, hinoki, camera cypress family, like boulevard cypress, savara cypress, zinc, different kind of junipers. That's my occupation. I work on yard trees and wet bottle brushes, plants from the Mediterranean area, Chile, you, know, you name it, I can figure it out. It's an aesthetic. Of course, you gotta read up on, you know, does it have a flower or something, or when it's, some plants are dormant in the, you know, the summertime, like a sago palm. That's when you transplant it versus something else that you transplant in the wintertime. So I, I, I just, uh, I found out that uh, there's no one in the whole world better than me in BS. <laughs> <laughs> it took me around the whole world, boy. I, I am good. I tell you that. I, I, I'm, I'm not ashamed to admit it. I'm not, uh, ah, man, what an arrogant, cocky guy. I, there's no one in the whole world that can BS me. I tell you. I heard it all, and I'll get you, man. So many people trying to match, you know, they trying to you know, zing me when I zing them. I'm good. But uh, I, I would hang around if I were to see, uh, you know, I would hang around going to see Bonsai, Bonsai Federation if they gave me the, uh, uh, the Circle Sensei Award or something like that. Oh, yeah, I, oh I received that already. Uh, <laughs> Or, you know, you know, there's a the President's uh, Distinguished Service Award. <laughs> I got that one too. What can I say? Uh, and then I worked on a lot of famous trees, whether they were bonsai or landscape trees. But I quit on my last one. I actually, the one before that, I did uh, the, I was kind of in charge of this project at the Long Beach, something burns, Japanese garden there. It was a year project. And I, and I came down here for like 20 times for that. And then uh, I did the, you know, Walt Disney's tree. So no one cares about this famous tree that George Washington planted and I worked on, but they always like that Walt Disney story. So it could, you know, I did, a, I did a presentation in Japantown on aesthetic pruning. Because uh, in the Japanese American community, that was very important. A lot of people had 
Japanese kind of gardens, or they were kind of more interested in, you know, as far as Japanese American, though this is a generalization or stereotypical, but they, you know, interested in maintaining their property. So I gave a class on just uh, you know, basic pruning in your garden, and camellias, and how to handle these things, and rhododendrons, and azaleas. And then there was a whole group of people in the front. And that was the arborist crew from Disneyland. They had heard I was going to give this presentation. They thought it was interesting, so they, the whole crew came. They liked what I said, so they asked me to. And it took a year to get the approval through the whole system there to work on Walt Disney's tree. <clears throat> And it didn't die. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> what kind of tree was it? It's a, uh, it's, a it's, it's called a Swiss mountain pine, but actually it's a Mughal pine. The old Mughal pines. The old Mughal pines were bigger. You know, they can get up to like 25 feet. And then, uh, you know, but now they're all, the cultivars are real small, you know, round munchkins. Because if you want a tree that big, uh, no one wants a big old round ball like that. And there's trees even bigger than that, like uh, Italian stone, stone pine. Mm -hmm. So if you want a great big tree like that, then... So the, the moveable pine in between was, no one wanted that. So, you know, it got phased out. But Walt Disney planted that, and they actually got... It was two... One, it wasn't good, it wasn't in good health. Two, it was maintenance for a long time, so it was kind of sheer. And then the main thing that I said, artistically, that it was... There was two things wrong with it. One, it didn't look like a tree that grew in the Alps. It looked like a round ball, you know. And then the other thing was, it was out of scale. It was getting too big. Excuse me, someone left their insurance card on the table outside. Ling Ang, A-N-G, L-I-N-G. Mercury insurance? No, no. no? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Is uh, Walt Disney's bonsai still at uh, Peter Pan? No, it's, it's so, not a bonsai, it's a landscape tree. Okay. So by definition, a bonsai would be uh -huh. three feet and shorter in a pot, yeah, okay. and aesthetically pruned. But is it still at Peter Pan? It's at uh, Storybook Land. Storybook Land, okay. It's a, it's a boat ride. Uh -huh. You gotta go through the whale's mouth, it's based on a Pinocchio story. So as you're going through this moat, you know, you're going through the moat, and you're looking up, you know, through the trees, and you see the Pinocchio going through the moat, and then you're going through the moat, and you're going through the moat, and you look up, and then there's like a little Swiss mountain village up there, you know, Geppetto's uh -huh. village. Uh -huh. And right behind that, there's the Alps. And right behind the building, you'll see this uh, round-headed pine up there. That's Walt Disney's tree. Uh -huh. They don't advertise it to the public, but uh, when I worked on that tree, I did a workshop for the Arbor's crew, you know, all the big tree pruners there. It was at 4 o'clock in the morning. You ever do a workshop at 4 in the morning? Oh, oh Lord. Lord. Yeah. And you were trying to get up at 1 o'clock in the morning, and then you try to be, I didn't want to, I'm a very regular guy. <laughs> so I have to kind of change your habits to, you know, I can't be out there, in morning time, we're going to tree and got to go. <laughs> I, I'm good. I figured it out. How to do this. <laughs> and then you go to, you know, you got to go through the back lot. And it's, it's very interesting. Once you, well, you got to get through the gate in the back lot. And it's like these things you see in a war zone. You know, a big metal plate comes out of the ground and stops you. And then you go through all the security and the thing go down, you go over it. But once you get in there, it's just interesting to see the back lot. And then they had a back lot nursery where they had all the stock and stuff. <clears throat> but uh, when I, I, the reason you got to do it at uh, 4 in the morning because the Arbor's crew, all maintenance crews got to leave the park when, when it opens. Oh. So in the summertime, they open up at 9 o'clock. So they got to be uh, up and ready to leave by 8. And they got paperwork other things to do for the last hour. So at 4 o'clock in the morning, you got there with the miners' hat, you know, they got the floodlights, and you're working on these trees explaining things, you know, what you would do. It's a difference between what a tree climbing arborist would do and what an aesthetic pruner would do. Still consider yourself an artist or an uh, uh, arborist, but I'm trying to keep things in scale or I'm trying to transition to make the tree look bigger than what it is. The big tree climbers, you know, they, they limit up, they clean out all the little stuff to make a big tree even bigger. But sometimes it just don't fit. Well, like in Disneyland, you know, you got uh, you got to keep it in a certain scale because it's also dangerous. You know, it's a public place. You got branches that get kind of wobbly. The tree's a little bit too big. You got to bring it back on more stout branches so they don't fall off and hit somebody. Or in aesthetics, you know, you got to take this branch out because it's not a branch. It's not a tree that's sitting in a field. It might be on Main Street, 
The branch is the blood right now, but it's going to come right in your face one day. Uh, and someone's going to run into it. So it's better that you cut it off now when it's at this stage, instead of taking it off later on when it's, you know, it's a size branch like that. Well, I work for different arboretums. I said, well, there's a pine there, and they got a little bud on the bottom there, around your ankle. Got to cut that off. Cut it off now rather than cutting off later with the saw. And, but that's something that people trip on. But uh, the Disneyland tree, uh, it's, uh, uh, I worked on, on that tree at 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, one hour every time. Because uh, it's when the first lights come up. Yeah, it's uh, bright enough, but then it was like a, it wasn't like someone took their cell phone on and took a little thing of me. It was a camera crew. And eight people came out. You know, there was a the director, there was a cameraman, there was someone with the boom, there was this, there was that. It was a big production. So I'm sitting there, man, if I screw this up, it's on tape. <laughs> yeah, but you have to narrate what you're doing because one, this, they consider the historical moment. Mm. So it's just like, it's uh, something that's in their, their files. It's first time it's been actually done this way. And number two was, of course, litigation-wise, if you, it's on tape that you really, you, know, you screw this thing up, you, know, you could be sued. But the third thing, they use it as a training manual. Because the crew has always changed, the supervisor changes, so it's on, the, it's on tape. This is what Dennis said, this is the side of dominance, the west or the south is where the sun is. It gets heavy, the north and east side atrophies on you. Or we gotta reduce the tree, but we can't reduce it too much, you'll kill it, so I said, this is how you transition. You wait for this shoot to come out, and then you take this off. And then one day this shoot will come out, and you take this off. And one day this shoot will come out, and you take that off. But it will never break way back in here, but it could break back about that much from the, the end of the cluster. It might take you 20 years, 30 years, but it, it's still, you can always be conscious of that. One day you might get the miracle bud there. You never know. Oh, then you wait, you know, you can't cut off on this little bud, it might just die on you. So you gotta wait till it, it's a viable branch and cut this thing off when it's the appropriate time. When's the appropriate time to cut off a branch like that, you know? Dormant season? Dormant season. But it's, it's a double thing. You could do it in November, or you can do it in February. In LA, you could do it December, January, too. I mean, there's a distinct winter here because there's, the sun is lower, there's not enough light. So the trees know that. But, you know, Japanese black pine really need a cold, not cold, cold, you know, but it needs like uh, down to freezing. Well, it's anywhere from up to about the highest, it could be maybe 38 degrees, it goes dormant. Why do you need that? Because it stores its energy up and then it comes out strong in the springtime with the big candles. So that's what you're trying to do. You know, you're trying to store this energy up so it comes busting out of the break storm and see healthy with these long candles. And then if you don't cut them off, it reverts into a regular sized tree, 40 feet tall. So if you don't have a robust tree and you cut these candles off, there's maybe not enough energy to push the second ones out. But they come out anemic, then the tree is maybe lost to you. Uh. <clears throat> okay, but can you, I'm slowly starting to work this thing down now. So either this is the mutant, or it's an omoshidori or something in between, you know, but I, I you know, we, we can do some more and I, I have to clean out these things. But I, I'm very careful with this one because I don't want to show this as a, you know, wow, is that where you hold it? <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes an omoshidori, I'll grab something like that, you know, and I, I'm taking a chance, I might break it off. You know, maybe I can push something underneath that hook and make it, make, make it on this side. Maybe that was a mistake. I don't know. That's what almost sure is. You know, I found out that I just trust my instinct. And sometimes, you know, yeah, I, mean, I did that. I'm going to keep this sucker. <laughs> Um, the, the areas of decision, one is, is there's a knot in the front. If I take that out, you might see this too much. So I will have to wait till these things develop and then I'll take the knot off later. So if I have a knot like that and I got something strung through it, then it will grow. 
But it's when you just see this bare hump there, but the side shoots like it's a branch coming from that area, but actually it's coming it's straight it through. Okay? And longer it adds to the almost shiroi factor. <clears throat> Okay, we'll do a little bit more tweaking of this. It's kind of a massaging technique too. You know, I will push it down, push it down, push it down. So every time I test this thing, I keep pushing it. So I can loosen the camera room here. So it's a massaging it and breaking, you know, it's, I don't know, maybe you do physical therapy and you have adhesions and then you gotta break them down before you can move. I'm doing the same thing here, but I'm not going to go like that and break the cambium on both sides. You know, interrupt the water line on both sides. And someone was talking about pitch, and then there's pitch and sap. They're different. So this thing that's coming out here is not sap. Yeah, but it's like saying, is it a fascicle or is this a sheath? But the inside of the cambium layer, there, there's two different types of cells. The phloem cells and the xylem cells. So the, the xylem cells is the one that, that conducts water. Then the phloem cell is the one that conducts the, the food. Photosynthesizes and the food goes back down into the root system. But that's, that's sap. <coughs> Pitch is this thing that, that's the sticky stuff. It's actually on, on, just underneath the bark and it's a defense mechanism for the tree. It's like your white blood cells in, in that sense. So if a beetle or boar attacks your branch, you get a healthy tree, the pitcher push it back out. That's why in the Sierras doing the drought, you see all these pines dying because of beetle problems, because the trees were dry. <clears throat> you know, they were drought conditions, the tree, and they lost the ability to produce pitch, and then they just got attacked. <clears throat> but the beetles are not as smart as, like, uh, true parasites. You know, parasites will keep the darn, they'll keep the parent alive, they keep feeding off of it. You know, the beetle will keep attacking that thing until the whole thing dies off. <clears throat> But that's why the pitch is so important. It's, 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 it's a defense mechanism here. <clears throat> okay, and then I have another design flaw. That I, I don't know how to handle that yet because the solution hasn't been, uh, it's not strong enough to do that. One day. Just screw it on. No, no. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably either this branch. <clears throat> Or this branch. I have to grow it out because it's quite flat right in here. Mm -hmm. So this is a little bit too one-sided. So if I just put something on, you know, here or here, that's why I, I, I tuck this part through but I'm keeping this part here on this side so I can grow it out just to soften that area. So when you're doing this kind of work, you know, sometimes you just see a one gallon can, you just S-curve or straight tree. But as you get better and better, I hope you can see 20 years down the road when you first start. So something may seem illogical to the viewer when you first start, but 20 years from now, oh man, that was a vision. So I don't know how almost sure it's going to turn out, but I've had things that look like this for like 20 years now, and I, I think they're, in my mind, really spectacular. When people come to my yard, hey, you know, look at that thing. So Bill Valavanis, I did a uh, a pine demo there too. I stuck it in my suitcase and my check in. Not check in, but you know, I, I, I don't know what I did. Because <clears throat> I don't, uh, when you go to these symposiums, conventions, and they supply you material, don't never trust anybody, man. This stuff is junk. <laughs> They're still wobbling in the fire. Oh man, this thing is like, one time I did one, it was like a, uh, I forgot what it was. But it's a bonsai thing, and the thing was like eight feet tall. The first branch was like six feet up in the air. Come on, you know, this is ridiculous. I, I can't keep cutting, you know, you're gonna go so far. So I just bring my own stuff. But this one, I had a young pine from the same group, and I was able to twist it, a 360. It took like two years to do that. I got to here, twist it a little more, a little more, a little more. And then when the trunk developed, this thing had a natural twist in there. One of a kind, you had a little loop in there. So I said, wow, that's special. Only nature could do that. Never seen that before. <laughs> yeah, I did it. <laughs> but yeah. you know. Okay. Dennis, what would Mitsuya say about some of those uh, emo uh, emotional, 
emotionally trees that you have? Yeah, I can't speak for him. But I don't think he would. You know, he's not a proponent of it. You know, he's very much into the classic or the contemporary style. But uh, he knew I was different too. You know, so I, uh, I think that, you know, I think he, you know, he would respect the fact that I'm trying to do this. But I don't think on his own he would do that. There's some things that the Bunjin style tends to fall into the almost shorty category. And you know, sometimes there's a little twist and the branch comes down. You know, I try to do it on, on anything that's possible to do it on. But if, it, if, if I found a tree that was really nice, I'm not gonna make almost shiroi out of it. If it's really nice without that on there. You know, but if, if it does, then I have to add interest. So in this case, God, I had this little ball like that with a stick like this, a long branch with nothing here. And I had a big butt. I, I, I consider this as a, you know, a viable technique. And I think that in, in five years from now, you'll find, wow, that's very interesting. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start right. now. Will you keep working? Okay, no, thank, you. Here. thank you. We're going to keep going. Winning ticket. Winning ticket. Right. Don't call the name. Don't call the name. Yeah, we'll just tuck it in down here. That's the last, that's the last call. Okay. Hey, this is Joe. Name Joe. Name <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, start calling. It's a red ticket, man. I see it. Yeah, red ticket. Ron. Oh, Ron. Ron. Uh, Bother you if I didn't do the whole thing? Whatever you want. It's not my treat, no. The reason is that I'll be going beyond the 60%. Right. So I, I have to wait to this point and I gotta figure out what's more important to cut out to come down to the last 5%. I gotta get some things out that, that maybe whoever wins the team will see. But I, you know, I can clean it out even more. Or you can want to, but I'm not. I'm not, because I, you know, I have a portion of If you like it that much, leave it alone. Okay. And this goes back, that's why I mentioned that Texas story. There's a sequence that you do these things. But if it's a dog and pony show, I, I train all day out. Wow. It will jeopardize the health of the tree. I didn't grow this thing for 20 plus years for it to you know, die now in my hands. Without being too stupid looking. The 
sometimes you see that in nature. You know, sometimes it's like, I've seen a lot of ponderosas like that. Because they're on top of the, the mountain. Like, I went collecting ponderosas in Wyoming. On the dome, they're all pushed down like that. One, is a lot of wind with the squirrels, and then number two is the snow pushing down. So there's a lot of distortion in here. You know, and then that's, so it's, it's justifiable. I have to tell the story. How do you feel about the moss growing into the bark? Not good. Swing it out? Clean it out. I use, uh, I mean, I didn't do it. I have moss all the time. And then uh, I have to use, uh, I use uh, denatured alcohol. Green nature alcohol? Yeah, just with the spray bottle, spray it on straight. You know, and it's not going to be, <laughs> it's not damaging to the tree, but it'll kill off the moss on the bark. Because, you know, obviously, the, you know, it's moss is wet. If it's lichen, I'll leave it on it. A lot of my trees have lichen on it. Real pretty, I mean, it's this kind of greenish blue thing on there, but it's dry. So I leave it on it, but the moss you take off. Because yeah, I just noticed that, that, that I was looking at the other side from the front, but when I look back here, it, there's definitely quite a bit of moss there. Yeah, so it's like, uh, yeah, but these are things that. That's this condition, oh, this, ha this, this location too. Yeah. I, I would. Would have been more diligent, but uh, I don't know. I was in Hawaii for like two weeks. And I was here, there. Let the moss grow. Yeah, I don't know. But I, I do have to worry about the moss. Explain some basic things. Not, the style is the style. So I'm not going to finish. I'm finished, actually. I'm not going to finish the whole tree. What it's supposed to look like forever. I just finished what I'm supposed to do today. But you see, quite a bit came out. Quite a bit. And then, uh, well, sometimes you, you set a certain percentage in your mind to keep going on it until it's strong enough. Only to push a little more. But uh, the question was about the moss. Take the moss off. But if it's on the bark, you need alcohol, something to you spray on it to kill the moss off. Moss is wet, it gets on the bark, it gets underneath the bark, and kill it off. And also, uh, moss around the trunk of the tree is not good, you get crown rot. Moss is wet. Again, if you know what lichen is, lichen is okay. It's dry. And you see lichen, it usually forms on an old tree. So luckily all my old trees that are over 50 years old you have lichen on it. Ash is acidic. And I wipe everybody out, man. I got inferior trees. I used to show with the Nambukai show. You know, there's some great trees in there, but mine always had pretty lichen on it. Everybody's like, oh man, look at that lichen. It's in August, but I have a lot of trees that are in fall color in August. So I bring a maple in there. Oh boy, hey, you know. What's really good is like the... Uh, I figured this out. If I bring a maple in, not only will they, you know, people look at it because it's fall color, but the cherry blossom queen and her cork come through. They always like to take a picture on the, you know, my tree. Every year they maple. And who did it? Oh, go walk over there. You know, we, want to we, don't you. Those, we don't get those fall colors out there. No, that's why I bring that. I'm not a fool. I'm not going to bring down the California juniper or something. Yeah. Yeah, you go from green to brown. <laughs> That's our color. <laughs> right, so I bring it down on my truck. You know how hard it is to bring a tree down, a deciduous tree in a truck in August? Yeah, well, I, it's, I leave at 5 in the morning. It's cold. I can't turn the heater on. And then you get down, you know, in the southern part when it's quite a big one, it gets kind of hot, I can't turn the air conditioning on. Well, these are dry up. Okay, I'm going to cut this off. So generally, you know, I already anticipated some of this work needs to be done. So I left a little stub here in the back. It's a, you know, it's not a gem, it's just a stub. I knew I had to tie this, these branches somehow to something. Mm -hmm. 
Some of his luck, I think he's already won a couple of these. And he's already standing up, so he can walk up here and grab it. It's your lucky day. Not twice in a row. I will I'll try to wrap it and I'll just Can you stand next to I will quickly explain some pine theory to you just in ten minutes as far as the sequence. Good, it's, it's a nice pine, it's a nice pine Okay, but try to look at this, I and mean, that's something that I want you to look at. I think you automatically look at the bottom, where your eye goes, but then you look at these things. But it was out here, so I pulled it back in. I, I tightened this thing up so much, now it's, it's almost, you know, I can increase the bend by tightening it up. I bent this top all the way down so that it's actually touching the trunk. It was here, so the first time I bent it to here, and then I put it, tied it to here. It looked okay, so I tied it all the way down. Where is the front now, you say? It's on this side. Oh, on the other side, okay. And then, where are this big shed white thing? Yeah, well that's, 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 yeah, that's the front of the side. But, and then I'm going, I'm letting these things grow so that it, it will hopefully give me something on this side. All right, finally everybody needed. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. You know, was it about 15 minute drive to get here? <laughs> Very good, Dennis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And there's more. Okay, so this is just a quick, it's not a review, it's just a quick uh, answer to some basic things. No one asked me any technical questions about sequence of decaling or the pick theory. If you didn't ask me, then I'll have to explain it to you. I want to point you on candling. I, I, I want to hear about that. Okay, sure. so let's say at this stage, this is the decaling stage. This is the time of the year. But you don't do it because I did, I did mostly like a fall work on this. I did the whole thing out. So if you're not very good at time, just do one, one of the three possible times to do this. Don't do massive reduction in the winter, or don't do repotting in the winter, and do the decaling and do the fall thinning. Just one thing. Your tree gets health enough and you're skilled enough, you can do two. Mostly it's spring decaling and fall thinning. If you have stock, it's mostly like winter work. So knock the heck out of it, do this, get the root ball, you know, get the soil better. So let's say we're at this stage, this, we don't have to do anything until the rest of the year. You don't have to do anything in the winter time, there's no more big branches to cut off. This was an escape branch, I used it as a point of interest. So sticking out, instead of cutting it off, like, like this one, I could, I could have twisted this thing back around and did some things with it too, but there have been too many branches coming from the same point on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So let's say we're at this stage of uh, next year, this month, sometime in June, the classic times. For the, for the candle stage. Progression is in the fall, about September, these new shoots will form a terminal bud. You'll see it, it's quite pronounced. That's the only thing that come out until next year. So that's the one that, that extends the branch out, or that's the one that makes it the lead of the tree. It's, it's the first one. And then you wait till about uh, January, February, then the secondary buds will come out around the terminal bud. I and mean, that's what forms these little rosettes, these little clusters. So the big one in the middle is, is always the biggest one, and yeah, the other one's on the side. So, and, and when you get to, let's say you get to about uh, May, it'll look like that. Mm -hmm. These little buds will start turning. There's a bud, and then when it starts to elongate, it's a shoot. Why do they call it a candle? Because on a branch, when these candles come up, they're white. I guess that's why they call it a candle. Uh, and then, your timing is everything. And then you, you go by the calendar if you wish, but I go by what the tree tells me. Mm -hmm. 
So the reason you want to decantle the tree is you take all the extra spring energy out of the tree. That's what makes it big, coarse. And then someone figured out a long time when you get the candle off, you get a secondary growth if the tree is strong enough. Yep. And that's what you style the tree with. It's much smaller, much finer, because all the energy came out with the spring candle. So you wait. All of a sudden, these little white can candles will turn green. Because the needles are coming out. So at this point, the photosynthesizing, they're adding what you, tend to, you took away, they're adding back into the tree. It's producing food, you're storing it up. So you want to cut it off when the things just start turning green, you cut the whole thing off, all the candles, where they start. So they don't produce food for the tree. You know, and then uh, you, you, it's ideal to take every candle off the tree, but that's ideal. You very seldom get to it. There's always something long, something short, something. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but if you get to this point, then you wait six weeks, and then you get these secondary growths coming out. You, they don't come out unless you take the candle off. It's just uh, it's like your baby tooth is sitting there, and the mature teeth can't come out, but the baby tooth is there. This won't come out unless the candle comes off. So you physically have to take the candle off. And if you wait, and you use these long things, but you don't get any refined small pieces. So these, if you tend to sequence right at this time, you wait till maybe, uh, well, by August, these would have elongated to this point. As opposed to, if you got the spring candle on, it would have been like that. So these are small ones that you forced out because you take the candle off. They're smaller and they harden off. They take about a month. So they're soft and tender, but by September, they're firm. And one of the characteristics of the healthy black pine is the needles are sharp. You work on a real healthy one, you actually start bleeding. You know, it's that sharp. That's why you gotta use tweezers with a long shank on it. To pluck out needles, you punch in your fingers. And also, you get an infection. Not from the pitch, but in Japan, they still throw them a spray, lime sulfur. Oh. Mm -hmm. And then it's in the needle, and it keeps, it's like a tattoo. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, you know, it's like a great tattoo. <laughs> so, you know, these are only this long. And then when they come out, they come out like in a cluster. That sounds too. You know, then you thin it off the two. In general. Why do you thin out the two? If you keep five. We have a knuckle. A knuckle will form, but also each one of these will produce five to seven candles mm -hmm. next spring. It'll be this big old mess. It'll look like this. Yeah. That's why you want to thin it out the two, but if you're on the top of the tree, thin it out the two. On the bottom of the tree, when you're first starting, just thin it out to three. Well, you don't have to thin out anything if you don't want. It's a weaker area, it really won't form the knuckle if it's a weak area. Also, it's just shading out the ground, it's nice. The ones on top shade the ones in the middle. That's why you gotta thin these things out. Now, have you heard that you're not supposed to cut needles? Mm -hmm. Can we cut them like in half? Yeah. Why? They brown up. They brown up? What's, what, what's so important about that? It just looks oh, ugly. Well, if they look like that, I'm not going to show it. If it's a long needle like that. Yeah. It's, it's not the technique is not good yet. I got to refine this tree, refine it so the needles come out short. So this is my yard. I cut all my needles. No one's looking at it. I just got to get light in there. And I, it's a long time to really pluck out needles. Or I, I, just don't, I just cut them in half. They brown up. Who cares? I'm just getting light inside. Mm -hmm. yeah, so at home, or if you stock, cut the needle if you wish. You get ready for exhibit. Don't cut the needle. If you have to cut the needle for exhibit, your pine technique is not good enough yet. You know, you should have a small needle with a point on it. Oh. That person is good. That person knows pine theory. You may not be a pine artist, but you know pine theory. But after a while, you get the flavor right, you get all these other things right. So that's the, in the spring, you want to take all these things off if you can. That's ideal. The fall, you thin it out. And also in the fall, you get this kind of look.
the end will start to elongate out because it's getting more sunlight. It gets pretty strong. So the fall terminology, uh, kirikomi, is like, uh, it means, kind of like means two things. It's cut back. So, the, you know, that's what you do. The government is cutting them back. You don't have to sequential this or do that. Just cut the whole darn end of the branch off. Cut back to here. You can take away the zone of strength, which was on the outside part of the branch. And then you don't get that pom-pom on the stick. You keep doing that. And five years later, this will get strong. Cut it back. You know, you keep cutting it back. Wow, well, I like that length, but then if you don't cut it back now, sometimes these things die on you before you have a chance to cut them back. You might get shaded out, you might just get weak because this is too strong, so you have to act when you're supposed to act. Cut back is in the fall. Decanal is in the spring. The fall usually is like September, October. If you decanal in May, you should thin it out in September. If you decanal in June, you should decanal in October. If you decanal in July, it's dead. You don't do it at all. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <coughs> you would do November because if you did it in July, that means you have a real strong candle. You know, it's like I said, when it turned green, you know, then it, well, I, you're not decaling after a while. It's just, it's not even, it's not a candle anymore. It's a viable shoot. But you go to Fresno, some real hot areas, long growing seasons, and the candle just keeps growing, 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 and it's like this long. It's just a long growing season. It's perfect. You know, it's a little dry, but it has the heat. It has the cold. And then it's just, it doesn't have a, a, a monsoon summer. You know, that's what you, you water for as a bonsai. You, know, you, you alleviate the fact that it's a, a drought by you can hand water. So if you do something, I used to work on some very famous, very nice trees in, in part air, baby, clovis. Fourth of July, man, it was hot. But I, you know, I'm a trooper, man, I did it. I'm delirious, man. That's okay. <laughs> and I, I work for fruit. You know, I, I, I had a really nice uh, very famous client in part there, and they had a packing shed. A brand name was Cash, K A S H, Kashiki. And they had, you know, they, their house was next to the packing shed and the Japanese garden there and pines. And, but then every time they go home, they, they told me to park my truck at the pack, packing shed. They threw all the pizzas, you know, I had like 80 boxes of pizzas and nectarines and stuff. Man, I was popular, I got home. <laughs> One time they fooled me, man. They stuck these things in those big green old things. And, you know, you have a couple of chars. I got a Japanese pumpkin or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. so, it's really, you know, the whole time I really like that. It's a squash. And what is this stuff, man? I'm going to throw it up on the highway. So, what is the pizza? The next thing. And then I did some volunteer work at a you know, Japanese American Senior Citizen Center in my area. All these old ladies, they just love me, boy. Damn, I'm a star. <laughs> so, again, it, 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 you have to wait a certain. If you do it in July, then you got to do it in November. The reason you don't want to do this in oh, March, the candle is still sticking up. You know, it might bother you. Why don't you take the candle off in March? It's not green. It's not green yet. That's one. What? The idea is. If you do that, it's too much energy in the plant. Yes, no. So by June, the second shoot's too long. Yeah, you'll get you get the second shoot too big. That's right. And then you cut these off there, and then you you've gone through three cycles. Three cycles, you might complete too much energy on the tree. So you don't want to do it too early. And that's your temptation. Well, it's coming up, I want to cut these things off. Wait. It's not trying. To... Just leave it alone, and then let that energy come out. Like when a needle turns green, when the, when the needles come out. Awesome. Now, why don't you want to do it in, uh, if you live in oh, Long Beach, then why don't you want to get off in July? No? It's not a growing season, it's too cold. Well, it's, it's, uh, if you do it in July, it's probably, there may not be enough energy to push out the next growth, or push it out healthy. You're taking too much out of the tree. So you want it, don't wait too long. Even though there's needles coming out, but don't wait too long. The timing is everything. You take out too early, more come out. You take out too late, the second growth comes out, and anemia's open. So there's a certain period that you have to do it. Spring is cut the candle. May is cut it back and thin out the clusters. The winter time is repot, cut the roots, cut big branches off. 
And then when you cut big branches off, don't cut them off on the same side, like two. You cut one on this side, and cut one on that side, so you don't interrupt the water line. If you cut two on one side, it's hard to house both the wounds, because the you know, water line is going to interrupt it. Like you have a deciduous tree, that's the kiss of death. Uh -huh. You have two branches, and you make two cuts, these things connect, and it goes all the way down and kills off the root. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so you just have a one-sided tree. So that those are the three times. And just one thing, but the fourth thing is, is with a real artist. You, know, you have to have a vision of what you're trying to do. You want the branch to go out this way, this way. And then some of the criteria are thinning. And this is like maybe, well, 50 things I can think of, but I'll mention maybe three. Yeah, could be a better five more minutes. Okay. <laughs> I've got a weird needle, but it's all. Yeah, so that's that's goofy. Take it out. Yeah. Take okay. the strong one out. You know, that's that's the almost right factor, which it ain't. The needle only lives three years, it'll fall off, so you're basing almost sure on something that's gonna live two years. So we'll do that. Take the strong one. Take the weak one. Take the weak one out. Very good. You got two. But these are too close to each other. And then you screw. Sometimes I have to keep the longer one. Cut the needle. You take out one of the two sisters oh, too close to each other. And then maybe I'll just take this thing back in here and just cut it in half. As long as there's some needles down here, it has to, it's theoretically possible to break, break out a butt there. I don't want to be long one out here. I'm taking a chance. But some people, when they shear, you cut off all these things. You're just taking a big chance that it'll pop back. So that's why, you know, sometimes you have to cut it in half. Then there's something called a peg theory. You, know, you deal with big peg, medium peg, small peg. They're all based on equalizing the, the branch. <clears throat> but if you do a, 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 a decaling, I'll just talk about one thing and then we'll stop. Because this, this falls into a lot of your, <clears throat> this is an easy branch to look at. Smaller candles, medium candles, large candles. Get to the end of the branch, you tend to be bigger candles. Now, in sequential decaling, you, know, you don't take them all at the same time. You take one group out, and then you wait, take another group out, and wait, and take another group out. How long is time in between? So this is one group here. This is two groups, and this is the third group. So you, 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 in a, let's say group three, you take them all at the same time. Which one would you take first? The strongest the one. Strongest one? Anybody else? That's the strongest too. Strongest? Strongest? They're all wrong. That's great. That's why I like this. I, I like to reprimand you and humiliate you in front of the public and, <laughs> you know, and show you how. You're wide awake in between or something? Or? I don't know. Then, uh, I like when you guys kind of guess and you're all wrong. And I'm saying, what? Guys. Okay, so you want to all take these out first. And that's the logical approach if you're just watching these trees. This is the one that sticks up. Our landscape trees, people and homeowners who have pine, they take the big ones out. But what happens in uh, six weeks from now? The middle one grows longer. Yeah. Well, you know, we're going to say we're going to take these out sooner or later. Yeah. But if you, six weeks from now, you have secondary growth of poplar. Secondary growth are coming out here. So let's say in the sequential of the county, this was like a May one. Yeah. This is like a, this for some arbitrary number, May 20th, June 6th. So let's say on May 20th, you took these out. And then you wait six weeks, and these will come out. But by then, these would be this big. This one. The second row. Now this one you take out June 6th. The small ones. Even you know, smaller. They'll, they'll be, yeah, they'll be small. And then these will, when you take that out, wait six weeks, these will be that much bigger. And these will be bigger yet. It's back to the same design. Yeah, you see more worse. You weaken the weak area, and then you straighten the stronger area by using the wrong technique. 
So if you have these things, you know, as I said, you, people say, I heard about this, this decaling technique or that one. You know, there's a whole bunch of them out there, but if you use the, it's like being a surgeon, man, you know, you, you, you use a nasal cavity operation on someone with a kidney problem, you're in trouble. But this is, this is what happens. So the ideal thing is to do this. We take these out first. A1, and then six weeks later, you start to get a little response. It's, it's a triggering mechanism. The tree, ah, you just cut off my arm. You know, I better start regenerating another arm here. You know, so it's sick. when you cut it down flush, you can tell where the, the green growth is, and then there's a little brown part where the old growth is. Cut right above the old growth. Keep, you know, don't cut into the old growth, just cut that green part off. And then right from there, you get new shoots coming out. So if you cut A1, and you wait six weeks, or maybe eight weeks in this case, they'll be about this size. If you cut this one off from May 20th, they will start coming out six weeks later, and these will be that much bigger. Will the weak ones always be weak, even though you trim them first? They, will they always be the weaker? It, it, not necessarily by pine technique you can change the dynamics. Okay. But in nature, if you don't, you know, it's not going to do that, then they always be weak, they get weaker, weak and they die out. Weak. And that's why you get the pump on them, they just die off. So that's why you have to use these techniques you know, in, in a bonsai context to uh, keep the weak areas from dying off. Sometimes it's getting light to it, sometimes it's cutting the end of the branch off, sometimes it's a 2D uh, sequence of decamming. So this is like. Six, six, you take these off, and then six weeks later, they'll be coming out. These will be about this size, and these will be a little bit bigger. They won't be gigantic, but they'll be just a little bit bigger. This is assuming it's on the same branch. Same branch. Not, not on tier, not top, the zone of... The, that's, that's what's hard about pine theory. Every branch is different. Correct. You know, this branch might exhibit this pattern, this branch exhibits that pattern. Sometimes it's big, medium, small, big, medium, small. Sometimes it's small, big in the middle, and, and medium in the outsides. Everyone is different, so you have to use a, a certain mindset to balance this out. So if this is what you do by, by fall, by uh, September. You should have to be the same height. It won't quite be, but be, this would be about that size. Yeah. This will be about this size, and this will be about this size. So the zone of strength will always outgrow this area. But the disparity is not really big and really small, it's like getting closer. You do that two or three years in a row, then you pretty soon get these in three years. And if you're really good, and I'll look at your work, it actually looks like this at the fall. It's actually stronger in the weak zone of weakness, but it's weaker in the zone of strength. This person is really good. They understand fine theory. They knew they go overboard so that in case one year you have a toe operation, you can go out there and do the right thing, but then you know, it won't be this it'll be kind of even by then. Okay, thank you. Go to work. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> but there's at least uh, I documented about a hundred techniques of decamming. Uh, sometimes you just cut these off and leave those. Sometimes the candle comes up that size. Don't the candle. Leave it alone. And then you, you know, try to figure out why it didn't come out strongly, and then you, you can do, you skip the deep and you do the fall work. Sometimes you skip the fall and the spring and you do the winter work. Sometimes you let the whole tree rest. Don't do anything. But there's, there's a zillion ways to do this, and then in the old days, I used to be quoting, well, that's just one way, that's not what I'm saying. There's a thousand ways to handle the same problem. <laughs> like, well, that's Dennis's way, or that's what his teacher in Japan said. That's not what I said. I'm just saying that there's all kinds of scenarios that come out. And then one last question, is it, not a trick question, but it's uh, on a cascade. Fine. Where's the zone of strength? And where's the zone of weakness? The zone of weakness is down in the 
the long branches. Up, right? yeah. That's correct. Very good. You take the same tree as stock, this will be the zone of strength. But if you bend this thing down, this becomes the zone of strength. This is the zone of weakness. Okay, so if you have that, this actually is after a while. So you have to make sure you don't have a strong top. And then you may have to sequence this handle or leave this alone. And then you count this and then you count that. In order to fall, you cut like this to go cut like that. You know, on a, on a, a slant, this is the zone of weakness, this is the zone of strength. The backside of the slant is pretty strong. Instead of hitting it, the branch moves up. So you leave this alone and you clobber this side. Or in a good design, you bring it down like that. So that you can kind of negate the strength of the branch by bending it down. So it's important you know, when you have a grove of trees, a cascade, half cascade, slant, their zone of strength changes according to the design of the tree. Okay, so. You liked it so much you left, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the good memo. I'm sure that thing is worth at least $10,000. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. Thank you.